Central Club. What's going on, people? Welcome to the Central Club. This episode is brought to you by Reinspire Printing and Ape Stride and also the City Arms. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the club, and hit the bell button to be notified of future content. As you can see, we are back in Hope Cottage. We're back in Kingston in my uncle's house, which means we've obviously got a London-based guest. And um, should have been Cardiff-based, really, this one. <laughs> should have been Cardiff. This one's been on the on the cards for a long, long time, and he belongs in Cardiff. I know that's his second home. Um, I'm really excited to get into this one. This man's a, a gifted formal professional footballer who's played at clubs such as Arsenal, Coventry, Wolverhampton, uh, and many more, but my favourite certainly was Cardiff City. It's uh, it's the one and only Jay Boffroyd. All right, mate. You, you're putting me on, aren't you? You're putting me on blast. Mate, the only reason why I didn't come Cardiff because you wouldn't pay my, pay my travel expenses. Don't say <laughs> that to the people, man. <laughs> I'm only joking. No, it just kept falling through, didn't it? I offered to pay you travel no, expenses. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even take it. I don't even want that. But yeah, just every time I was meant to be coming down there, it just kept falling through, didn't it? So yeah, yeah. What honest. I was trying to do is was time here. So when you was down anyway, oh, look, you're down, mate. Let's just do an interview. No, I know. And, and do you know what? I was going to come. I had every intention of coming there. But obviously, you know, mm. things at Sky changed. And then there were certain events that I was going to come to, which changed. And then it was just like back and forth. And in the end, I was just like, oh, man, I need to get this done. If you're in London, just, you know, let me yeah, know. Yeah. And you said, actually, I come down to Kingston sometimes. What do you think? So I was like, perfect. Yeah, yeah, man. I've still, driven, I've still driven an hour. Yeah. I've still driven it out, is so that, it's not is exactly that close. taking you to get here, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'll square you up in a minute, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, how's things? All good, man. I'm enjoying retirement from football. Um, obviously, I'm working on Sky now, Talk Sport, um, TNT. Um, so that's going well. I'm enjoying that. Um, I love my football still. I watch it all the time, um, especially like Arsenal. But then my second team, obviously, is the Cardiff. Um, yeah, I've got my own pod show as well, which is primarily golf. And basically we just, you know, want to, you know, golf is a middle-class sport, right? So like we kind of want to promote, we're, we're doing it because of me really and and, and uh, the guy I do it with, Trey Niven, because he came from, you know, a tough, a tough background. Obviously I, I did as well. I didn't know golf existed since Tiger Woods came out. And it's just one of those situations where kids, especially when they come from limited means and come from like the concrete jungle, you, you don't have the opportunities to even try and play golf, even if you do like it. And if you do love it, then it's hard to get hold of, you know, clubs. And basically we want to, you know, you know, put together an initiative, a following that, you know, we can, you know, help with that and, you know, give people the opportunities to realize the potential if they like something. Yeah, that's that's amazing, and I think just to touch on that quickly, like like you said, when you've come from a if you come from a poor background or an you know unprivileged background, um, if you look in America, where you know you've got American football that pays for families and basketball, you know, there's probably some great golf players, you know, on the council estates and they, that and they, they don't will know, never exactly. know. And, and, and that's the thing. That's why we want to like help kids, you know, give them the opportunity because I think it's important, you know, for me, when I was coming up, I went to a, a terrible school and, you know, we, we did rugby, no interest in that. Cricket, no interest in that. So if, it was only football, but now like I speak to other people. I mean, some of their kids go to private school and whatnot and they're doing like fencing and they're doing other sort like golf, even some of them. And it's like, you know, some of these state schools, should have that on the curriculum as well as something to try because it's not it, i think golf is moving in a certain way now and it's trying to evolve it's of it's evolving more slow than other sports but it's trying to evolve and you know we're helped we're helping trying to and boost that and do you think that's because of the pricing of golf clubs equipment memberships that it's a think, slower evolving sport yeah there's just a lot of things there could be a there's a there could be a lot of out outgoings to, to play to play golf um you know with for me football i mean it didn't even have to be a football man you just crush a can put two bags down and kick a can around you know so you was always kind of playing football with a tennis ball can anything that's round really um but with that obviously you can't you've got to go to you know might have to go to a range you obviously you might have to pay for that golf clubs are not 
you know, not exactly cheap. Um, even though you can get really, you know, I just, we've got a, a show coming out in the future and it's like a hundred pound set of clubs. Um, so, you know, there is. To show people the budget so they can yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah. You, still like can, that, you still can, you know, play. But then it's obviously, if you really want to be a professional, that's where the money comes in because you've got to pay, you know, for lessons. You know, you want to play on nice courses. You, you know, obviously it's very time consuming. So your parents have to be able to get you from A to B. Like, and the person I do it with, Trey, he was he was telling me that he used to go to the range before school, go to school and go to the range after school. And, you know, for, for us, I'm guessing, that when we went to school, it was just football. So I'd get to school, play football before school, lunchtime, football, after school, football. You know, when I was coming up, my only free day was like a Monday. But even then I was playing football, football. with my mates. So yeah. I never really had a, a day that, where I wasn't playing football. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of football, um, you've played at a lot of clubs. Um, and, and you know, we, we're dating back from the beginning of the 2000s, the beginning of the millennium. Yeah. But the thing that shocks me the most is you only retired two years ago, bro. <laughs> two years ago, yeah. were during lockdown. Like, yeah. you've only just retired. Yeah. No, I mean, to, to be honest, I wasn't even going to retire as well. Like, they offered me another two years, my club. And... um because of the lockdown and because of the the strictness of the Japanese government, they basically said any foreigner that's going to, you know, that can come into the country is only going to be in a working visa, which ultimately meant that my wife and son couldn't come over on a spousal visa. Yeah. So when it got to that point, you know, my son's, you know, two and three years old in, in during them COVID years, I didn't see him much. My relationship with him was on, my, was on FaceTime. Yeah. So, you know, he's crying on the phone to me, why aren't you coming home? And, you know, it's tough because at the same time, I'm trying to concentrate on football, but then I see things like that before I go training, after I go training. Um, the, obviously, the time difference is big, so I can only speak to him for certain parts of the day. Um, it just got to one of those points where I was like, you know, I've had a 23-year career, yeah. 23 years career. Um, you know, football, I mean, family has to come before f um, football now. So that's what I did. I mean, had, had I have been younger, you know, my life has always, you know, been tunnel vision for football. But it got to a point where I was just like, you know what, I've I've achieved everything I want to achieve. I could have definitely done it at a high heights had my attitude been better when I was younger. But I still achieved everything I wanted to do. You know, I, I played for my country. I played in, in Serie A. Uh, you know, I played in um, the equivalent of Europa League, Premier League. I earned a lot of money. Um, so... For me, I achieved everything I wanted to. And on the way I met, you know, I've met good people. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I look at my career as a success and there's no doubt about it. I could have been, you know, much more successful. But, you know, I was a product of my environment. Um, I don't know, people see me the way I am now and, you know, it's completely different to the way I was growing up. I had anger issues. Um, I had problems. I was hanging around with, you know, people that are shooting people, stabbing people, robbing security vans. My, one of my friends just come out recently, done a 10 year stretch. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, I did have things good. Like my mum and dad would take me football and they were fantastic for me. But the reason why I had my attitude is because I, my mind, I couldn't, I couldn't go to, I couldn't be hanging around on the streets in my estate and then, completely changed my mindset when I went Arsenal. I just didn't have that. And there wasn't a support system back then that there is now in football. Yeah. Um, if there was, then obviously I would have been able to cope with the, the differences better, but it just wasn't like that. But of course I was still able to, you know, go down the pathway, the right pathway of football and, and have a full career. So you grew up in, in, in North London, yeah? Yeah, so I grew up in North London, a place called Archway. Um, a lot of my friends were from Tottenham. So we used to be around Archway, Hornsey, um, Holloway, Cali, um, like I said, Tottenham, Wood Green. Um, and right where the wars are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was always like, you know, that's why I said like, I mean, I, I was just having a conversation with my son last night. He's going to be 21. And I was talking about, you know, getting him something obviously memorable. You know, we're talking about watches and whatnot. And I was just like, listen, I can get a watch for you, but I don't want to put a target on your head. Yeah. 
you know, the worst thing, you know, someone, you come to me and say, oh, you know, I find out, oh, you know, your son's been killed. And it's happened recently. Like people are getting killed and they've got fake watches on. Right. And it's just like, I don't want to put that kind of target on his head. You know, he's not, he's not streetwise like, like I would be. He didn't, he didn't grow up in a rough area. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a smart kid. He's a, he's got his head on the right shoulders, but he, he, he's, he's, he didn't come from Is he you know, a my area. Road? Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But Someone I think he, he just, he, you know, some people, it's not a bad thing. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he wasn't from my area. I'm glad he hasn't yeah. experienced the same things as me. Um, and I, you know, I tell him about it sometimes. He asked me about it, you know. He says, what was your first day at school like? My first day at school, I see some kid get hit in the head with a rounder's bat about six times. Blood squaring out his head. Like, that's what I experienced. I, I went from primary school to that. And it was just like an iron opener. So for me, I'm, I'm glad that he, he didn't have to experience that kind of thing. He lives in Welling Garden City, which is in Hertfordshire, which is, you know, a nice area. But of course, you know, now when he comes into London as he does, you know, you need to have your head on a swivel just in case because, you know, people that want to rob you are not robbing people in Tottenham. They're robbing people in Mayfair. Of course. Because that's where money is, right? Yeah. That's how crime works, isn't it? We, yeah. we go to the nice areas. I know I did. <laughs> no, so you do, you travel to these, you know, unfortunately. Of course, it still happens in, in those other areas, but yeah, exactly. the organised ones are travelling, and they, to to, uh, to hit the posh shops, the posh yeah. posh people. Exactly. Like, you know, even where I live, like, there's, there's definitely, like, cards stolen two or three yeah. times a week. You part of the Neighbourhood Watch uh, committee, like? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. I'm good. Use your experience. Isn't it? I'm, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> He's still street. You know, <laughs> down, he? Yeah. So, 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 when you went to like, obviously, when you had that call up to go into Arsenal or the academy, uh, was that something you wanted at the time? Oh, you know, you see, you were playing football, but well, I, I initially actually was at QPR. So, I when I signed for my first Sunday team, which was Westwood Boys. Um, we had a really good team at the time. We had our trials at Market Road, um, which is like anyone that's from North London. I mean, f from most of London would have definitely played at Market Road. It's just like, if you're a top Loads footballer, it's just like you go there and you play football. It's like, it was kind of like, you know, a, a much smaller Hackney Marshes. Like Hackney Marshes. But yeah. it was like, everyone just used to go there. Um, so that's where we had our trial. My trial, I scored four, got, um, got signed for Westwood Boys. And then, in that first year, QPR wanted to sign me. So that was great. So then I signed for QPR. So I was there from nine to 10, but where I used to live in Archway to get to, um, to get to QPR training, which was like, yeah, kind of West London, Hanging Lane. Um, it was, it would take me like about an hour and a half because of all the traffic. Um, so my dad would have to leave work early, which obviously he couldn't do smuggle me in these back of his British Telecom van, which he wasn't allowed to do, yeah. and get me to training. And it just became like really difficult. And then in that first year that I was playing for QPR and signed for QPR, Arsenal came in for me. And it was just like a perfect scenario. I support Arsenal, my family support Arsenal. Um, and I could walk to Highbury. So it was it was easy. I could get a bus from school. I could do all these things myself. So um, it was just like a real, a real touch. Um, and it was the best thing at the time. It was like a great club to be a part of. Yeah. Like generally, like all the best players around London, South London, North London, East West. Arsenal would have them, um, and then it was a you know we we used to train twice a week. I used to play for my district um, on a Saturday, and then Arsenal on a Sunday. Um, so a lot of I didn't. I had a childhood, but it wasn't like what the childhood that my friends would have just purely for the fact that I love football and I was playing it all the time. Yeah. Yeah, Arsenal really was the club, weren't it, back then? Like, you know, I don't think like Chelsea and if you look at their first team, no, it wasn't weren't. as big it was, as... It was Man United, it was Man United and, or well, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, really. Yeah. But, I mean, like as I got older and, and I started, obviously my body started changing, I started getting taller. The only thing about Arsenal is before Arsene Wenger came, they was trying to kind of make, mold me into like an, a Niall Quinn kind of really? player and, and target man. And that was never me. Like I used to go and play football, like a place called, we, it was called the Cape. And we used to go there. It was like, you know, the cage. 
like football people pitch. Street. Yeah, and we used to we used to go and play. We used to go and play there. So like for me, it was like about step overs, nutmegging people, dribbling, and then I come to Arsenal, and it's like you're trying to make me hold like yeah. goalkeeper kick the ball up to me, hold the ball, get in the box, and I just didn't enjoy that. So it was a blessing that Arsene Wenger came when I I think he came when I was like about I don't know maybe fourteen or fifteen or something like that. So it was perfect. So he, so, so like, although, because you said you was at the academy, like, mm. so he, I asked in Wenger left then. Is so that... I was training like Tuesday and Thursday and then we'd play on a Sunday. At the time, Liam Brady was the youth development officer. So he had the biggest say over us. But I mean, like, we, I mean, I was with my, we, we still get together now. We were together on, on, on Sunday. You and Brady? No, uh, me and my Arsenal team. Okay. So me, like Graham Stack, Stephen Sidwell, David Noble, Joe Kafour. Jeremy Lynch? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. But but I mean, we still get together now. We're like such a tight group. John Halls is now like yeah. a top model. Um, funny, a funny one from Cali as well. Um, but yeah, it's like when we get together, it's just like we never, you know, like we've been together, you know, the week yeah. before. Yeah. Um, so we've got a really tight knit group. I don't think not many people will have that. No, but no, we was no, a special you don't, youth you don't team. Hear that. We was a special youth team. We had that. Like, we won the youth cup two times in a row, um, but we don't get the same credit like the '92 Man United team would get, no. just because you know not a lot of players made it to them kind of it's heights. Because you never went through and followed through it. Uh, yeah, like only team like players still made a living at the game, but it just wasn't in the Premier League. No, um, but like, we was we was a really good team, but. I think the thing that I loved about Arsenal is that we all had like a similar mentality. Like we all wanted to be the best player in the team. And I think when you got that, you've got that team spirit that you're always going to be wanting to perform or wanting to be the best player on a Saturday. You know, and there used to be like, you know, the match day programs. So like you wanted to be in the match day program because you're, you're giving yourself exposure you're the body in your to the rest of the, to, to North London, to the rest of the fans that didn't know who you are, the person, the player that's coming up. And then, you know, as I was getting older, like I got to like, what, what, I don't even know what, what year is a work experience year? Is it 14 year, year, or something like that? year 11, isn't it? I don't is even you know. Is it year nine or 11? Yeah. But I remember like, so initially, cause I like, I always like fashion. And then um, yeah, I, I remember I went to, <laughs> I went to do my, um, what's it um, work experience and um, I went to there was a shop in London at the time that you sold the designer clothes and it was called Cecil G so I applied to go there got accepted or whatever and then on my first day I got sacked because I was just like this. some geezer coming to the shop and he was like making me go kept running to the stock room can I try this suit can I try that suit and I said mate are you going to buy something am I just like doing this legwork for no reason so like he said he told the boss and then the boss says like, don't come back tomorrow. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. So I went home and then on the next day I woke up and Liam Brady called my mum and said, uh, what's Jay doing for work experience? And he was like, she was like, at the moment, he's not doing nothing. So he's like, let him come train, make him come to training. So that's when I started going to training like and doing the jobs like cleaning boots, you know, kind putting like up the, the nets, the, the collecting YTS balls. Stuff, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of thing before I was a YTS. Yeah. So that's when I got my first kind of taste of playing football every day because I still would be training, but I just have to do the jobs as well. So, I mean, that that was really good as well. So you, I'm, I'm, I assume you got to meet some of the... Uh... Yeah, so it was like Tony Adams, Lee Dixon, Nigel Winterburn, um, Ray Parler, yeah. Ian Wright, like... I mean, Ian Wright in North London's like an absolute, I mean, he's a legend to me now. Like, I love Ian Wright. Like, when I see him, I always, you know, he's my elder. I give him the utmost respect. And for for a black kid coming through in North London, he's like God when he was coming up. Everyone wanted to be in Ian Wright. And then yeah. he, he, he's celebrations and stuff like that. He just, Class. yeah, resonated with people that was on the street um, because that's where he came from. So it was, it was like great. And then I see him, like Kevin Campbell was there at the time, Cardiff as well. Um, it, it was like a really, I don't think there was any club better than Arsenal to be at when you're growing up and trying to like. I, like, I can't imagine it obviously, but you know, being that kid, this is your future and, and, and the ones in your potential position are are dominating Premier League or, you know, they did win titles and FA Cups, but they were all legends, legendary players. Yeah. 
A hundred percent. And to be to be honest, like so when I got that taste of going there every day, in my mind I started feeling like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a professional now. Because they was telling but me. But was there talk? Like you knew you see like Yeah, in they the were telling me like, was 14. like Jake the next kid. Yeah, so they were saying like, you know, at 14, they were saying you're you're definitely gonna, you know, get your YTS and things like that. So in my mind I was thinking, I ain't really got to pay attention at school. My mum and dad just said to me, like, listen, as long as you pass maths, English and science, uh, we don't really care about the rest. So in my mind, I was like, okay, perfect. You know, and then I used to go in into school, like with a chip on my shoulder and, you know, teachers would be like, you know, I'd be sitting at the back doing my work. I've done my work, but now, now I'm talking and, you know, they'd be like shouting my name, Jay, and I'd be like, hold on a minute, I'm talking like, to the teacher. And she'd be like, get out. Okay go and play football. So for me, it was just like, I had a bit of a, no, I don't want to say chip on my shoulder, just attitude. Did any of them ever say you, you yeah, of course, what attitude? if you don't make it? And I'm like, I'm going to make it. And then, and then it's like, what if you don't? I'm going to. So it's like back and forward because in my mind, I was thinking, that's what I have to do. That's what I'm going to do. I didn't want any of that negativity. So even like when teachers used to say, oh, go and see the headmaster and, you know, he'd threaten to suspend me or something like that. I'd be like, well, if you suspend me, I'm I'm not going to be playing football for you no more. I'll tell you that. And at the time, my my school was like a football school. Yeah. So it was like... Reputation. Yeah, so I'd be like, okay, Jay, I'll give you one more chance. Um, <laughs> I, used to, I used to try and forge signatures sometimes and all, all sorts of stuff. But main thing is that, you know, I came through school. I got my, you know, I got, I think I got C and a couple Bs in my maths, English and science. Um... And then, you know, left school and obviously yeah. went to Arsenal, which was, again, full time. So it was, it was perfect. You know when you go look back and you say, like, you know, I didn't reach the heights I could have. Mm. Is it because of these things, you think? Yeah, I told you, it's because my product of my environment. Like, I was hanging around some serious people. Not like, you know, I don't want to get certain people yeah. in, in trouble by mentioning names. But I was, I was hanging around with serious people. And it was like, I think because I played football, I had the people that wanted to like protect me and look after me and help me achieve my dreams. And then it was like the haters that would try and like, yeah, you're always going to get that yeah, evil and, eye. And that's why I had to, yeah, the evil eye. And that's why I had to kind of know how to protect myself at the time. I, my dad's an amateur boxing coach. So he's taken me to, you know, do boxing yeah. like um, some evenings a week. So I, I knew how to fight. That was never a problem. Still undefeated. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mate, when you see these things in the paper, like, oh, he had a fight and blah, blah, blah. It's like, there's fights every week in, in, in football clubs. But no one cares about a fight. There's going to be a fight. There's, you know, we're all male. Competitive. There's testosterone. There's competing. Competing, sorry. So, you know, that's going to happen. Um, so, that, that you know, that's funny when I when I read stuff like that. Who's uh, the boy? Who do, who do we interviewed? He, I don't know, and product, product of his environment, really. Terminator. Played for QPR, didn't he? What's his name? He's he's from uh, Edmonton. Who? He's a rapper, Terminator. I'll tell you his name now. He's a bit old. He's probably a bit younger than you. I'll tell you his name now. Uh, he was a QPR. He, uh, you know what the thing is? Not many people. And he was, he, he, you know, he he chose uh, Shabazz Badu. Yeah, he played. He played for. Uh, yeah. That might, he must. He must be a QPR. lot younger than me. Then. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, but I remember when I was so when I was coming through, it was just like yeah, that's in, the kid you got to. <laughs> so I said, yeah, yeah much you will be old. He'd be playing at City there. He's played against City. Shabazz, oh, no. yeah. Later. He, so I, T. yeah, I mean the only pe like obviously we had our Arsenal team, but then you know from my area, like Islet and Cali, Archway was, I guess it was, was Joe of Cole. Ballers. But Joe Cole, so like that's when you he's know, north, is he? Yeah, North London. Yeah, Camden. Obviously, he was unbelievable. That I, obviously I played with for Islet and Camden District, and you know it was funny. Like we, just, it was a crazy. Like I think I scored like seventy goals in one season. Well, he was behind me. It was like, it was amazing. But I definitely think that I was a, a product of my environment. You know, I've obviously there were certain things that happened. You know, a couple of nights in a cell and stuff like that. But for me, it was like I don't, I don't really care. Like it wasn't serious. My, it was no, nah, it was nothing like crazy. It's, <laughs> really serious but you know things like that did happen yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's not too many people know this but no yeah I thought you know I was just because you're, you're, you're a big guy as well isn't you do you know what I mean 
Yeah, I just didn't like. I don't. I hate when people take liberties. I hate bullies. Um, you know, and it's, for me, there's nothing worse than a bully. Um, you know, so I, I always used to know how to take care of myself. It was my dad that took me to the boxing club, so I like I, I know how to. You get a bit of an all rounder. Yeah, I, I know how to look after myself, and you know, I'm not. You know, my dad always says to me, "Listen, if someone comes into your airspace, don't get hit first, because that could be that could be it." Yeah. So like when people, you know, when you can see when someone's eyes have gone, right? And they, you know, so they're coming to you. First, yeah. yeah, I'm always first. And, you know, <laughs> again, that in itself, you know, give me a bit of a reputation, especially yeah. with managers that, you know, I start trouble. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get knocked out. You always want him on your side though, innit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just quickly, and back to Jeremy Lynch. Did he, was he really at Arsenal him? Who? Like Jeremy Lynch. I don't know. Not when I was there. Not when I was. How old is he? Was it Mwamba? He's you? younger than me then. So he's younger than me. So he, he, he might have been. Do you know the guy I'm on about? The football, what was it? The freestyler. He's a football freestyler. He, you know exactly. Oh, no, no, oh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I do Light remember. I did, the mixed race guy, yeah. And yeah, he said no. he was there. He said he like the Invincibles, like he knew him all. He was. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think that might be hot air. And yeah. you know, if I'm wrong, prove it. You get me. You I played in. Him. I played in a thingy. I played in a um, a charity game with him in it um, recently. Last year, I think it was. Was he good? <laughs> Just in a couple around the world, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, when you see him bang these free kicks in. I think he had two free kicks. I said to him, like, I said to him, I'll give you a grand if you score this, and he hit the bottom of the wall. So <laughs> 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 I don't even know if he heard me, but. That, yeah. That's not to say he ain't got good technique because he can strike the ball, but just not in open play in a game. Yeah. Right? Every, I don't know what the thing is. Everyone says, oh, I could have been this. I could have been that. I don't care about that shit, man. Why, if you could have been, why wasn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Don't Everyone say like that. I hate Arsenal, that I hate them kind of thing. Everyone I trust for Arsenal. It's so many of them people around. It's just like the people that do make it, they make it for a reason. It's not just yeah, your yeah, football yeah. ability. It's what it's what goes in in your mind. Well, I always you say, have to have, have says, mental toughness. But when someone says I've had trials for us, well, surely anyone's entitled to a trial, isn't they? Yeah, like, who cares about trials? No one cares about that. trials. No one. Listen, I, I I see things now. Like I've got to say, he's six years old, and I go and watch him training now, and you know, he just has fun. He loves football, but then you hear parents. He's got a chance. He's got a chance to make it. Seven years old, six years old. Yeah, what are you wild. fucking thinking? Like naught point, naught one chance that he's gonna make it. People don't understand how hard it is. Yeah, and you know, I played with people when I was growing up. There's there's people that I was playing with under 18s England that don't end up making. Where are they? Where yeah. are exactly? And it's and it, people just don't understand how hard it is on your body. You know, can you take the pressure? Can you handle the pressure? Can you handle them dips? Like it's just not easy. And I think nowadays. It's easier because you've got that support system. But when I was coming up, it wasn't like that. You, yeah. you, to really get money, you had to perform, right? Now you get money just for potentially being good and English because there's an English, there was an English quota. So there's a, a lot more, I think it's a lot easier now to, I don't want to say it's easy to, you know, become a professional footballer because it's definitely not easy. But I think, the times back when I was coming up were much harder to become a professional footballer and earn an, enough money to, you know, be comfortable when you finish playing football. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's so true, mate. It's so many people you look at and you think, oh, when we, you, you was a definite, like you yeah. was a dead sir to make it. But life comes into play as well, not just yeah, this, those, this is what life, I mean. you know, things happen in life. Yeah, like, you I, know, I, and, I tell you who I remember. Do you, remember, do you remember a guy called Leon Jean from Cardiff? Mate, bad Leon man. Jean, he, he was at Arsenal oh, with me. Do you know what? I'm, Leon I'm Jean was at Arsenal with me. He was the most talented player I've ever seen at that age, I'm under like 15 and this, stuff. Yeah. He was unbelievable, but he had about fucking four kids when he was 16. So Leon's in jail right now. Is he? He's in jail on a big one. I've... Oh, really? Well, well, his boy, his, his, his boy uh, died um, last year, didn't he? Oh, bloody in a car yeah. crash they, they, on St. Mellon's roundabout, you know, the St. Mellon's roundabout. Oh, right. I'll probably do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, they were missing all weekend. Like they, they didn't know where they was. These last, they were they were in the roundabout. Two, five of them, two of them survived, but his boy yeah, no. passed. Like, but uh, 
I've got respect for. I got a lot. You know, I respect him, man. He always kept it real, and he was always himself. He tried to do it his way. It didn't Did he happen go QPR for him. as well? Yeah, I think he was at QPR as well. Yeah, but yeah. he was like, he was a really good player at that age. But even then, again, it's like you're that age, like fourteen, something like that, and it's like you can have the most talent in the world, but life happens, things happen. You can be a product of your environment. You can be influenced by the wrong people, and you end up not making yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So trials or whatnot, that's just bullshit. It doesn't mean nothing. Who cares about, I had a trial. You yeah. Know, what does a trial mean? Did Pat Rice? Pat Rice. Pat yeah. Rice would be chasing him around North London trying yeah. to look for him in our life because... Yeah, because he was, like, he was just off the rails. But the thing, again, like, I, if if someone like that came around now and he's that, you know, talented, you have a support system to look after you. Yeah. Then you didn't. It was just like, you just have to go and play. If you don't play, you don't really love it. You just get moved to one side. Someone else would do it. And if that support system was was there back then, do you think he would have, have gone for her? Yeah, definitely. Because he had that, that raw talent. He had raw talent. He was he was quick. He was strong. He was skillful. He could score a goal. He could play on... The, I remember he, he was right footed. He could play on the, the, the left wing. He could play as a, a number 10. He could play off... He was a very good player. For me to say that, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm saying Talks he was a baller. Over here, yeah, like. I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I don't give he people. He thinks Nunes is shit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's shit, but like he's not eight million pound player. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's mad. Do you know what? That's a mad blast because we one of our biggest requests to get on has been Leon, and I'm yeah. like. I can't. He's 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 away. You need to go and visit him in prison and do it then. Yeah, it'd be a good one. Yeah, it'd be well, a wild he, one. He, he's a he's a. I bet he's got so many stories about when he was coming. But I mean, again, like, I I really liked him. I liked playing with him. He was a good lad always. He yeah, was a laugh that, as if, well. If Leon or his boys saw this, what anything you'd say to him? <laughs> I mean, get your head down, man. Get your head down. You know, it's funny because my friend just came out of prison as well, and I was like, I was speaking to him recently because I haven't seen him again. Because he done a stretch, but he was saying that like all I do now is just keep myself active. I just go to work all the time because I got to look after my family. Now. But you know what the thing is like? Obviously, when you come from a tough background, and you know, you got, how many kid Leon must have like yeah, he got like four kids. or five kids. Tremaine. Yeah. Yeah, he's got beer kids, right? Yeah. He's but a I good mean, like, kid even, as well, he was exactly like, like green eyes, eyes like green eyes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he was like, he, he, I mean, listen, I think when you, you need to get out and you need to get your life, I think, you know, hopefully, you know, being in prison for this long will get his mind right. He comes out and he gets on a straight and narrow to look after himself and his, and his family. Because that's the most important thing, yeah, your kids. You get them on the straight and narrow. I don't know what they're doing, but if they're on antics doing, well, you know, what you just said, then you know, they need to get on the straight and narrow and start understanding that life is precious and you ain't get one life on this planet. So, yeah. you know, get your head down and start doing something that is respectable that you can look after your family and do. Because ultimately, these these kids are going to have kids as well, right? You've got to look after the yeah. next generation. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the only thing I would say. But, you know, I'd, you know, now you've told me that, I mean, I might even go to, to, to where Leon is in prison and go and chat to him myself. I think something like that would go a long way, wouldn't it? We'll, try, we'll go together then. Sort right. it out and I'll come and do it. 100%. Yeah? We'll do it. Okay, I promise. Okay. All right, let's jump a bit more then. Because you've been through so many clubs and I, <laughs> I found that really interesting, you know, that part of your life. But you went to Coventry. Yeah. Um, was you gutted about that move? Was you happy? Was you playing, you know? I mean, I, I was just gutted. I, again, I was gutted that I didn't play for Arsenal, yeah. but I got sold to, to Coventry. People people say, oh, he got sacked. I didn't get sacked. I remember getting money from the transfer fee. Okay. So I didn't get sacked. Um, so I went there and I was just like. Well, what did they say the sacking was for? I didn't say the sack. I didn't get sacked. They just said, because I was a pro now. So they, and I was one of the only ones that was a pro. So when I actually signed my YT, I signed one year YTS three year pro. So I was one of the only, I think Jermaine Pennant had a pro contract and there was a few Irish boys that had a pro contract. Jeremy and Lydia had a pro contract. But apart from that, no one had a pro contract. So they put me in the transfer list. They didn't sack me, Straight so they up, had man. to sell me. And I, f I think, I'm not sure what the exact fee was, but I think it was close to a million, a million pounds yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah. Someone that ain't played a, a first team game was, you know, was a large amount of money. But I remember like, I, I was kind of like, I don't care, man. I'm going to go and play football in the Premier League anyway. I believed in myself, you know. No, no one believed in myself more than me. So like, I went there and I remember like Gordon Strachan called me. And at the time, 
you know, for me, it was all about Arsenal. And I looked at Man United and teams like this. And I remember when Gorn and Strachan called my house, my mum was like, Gorn and Strachan's on the phone. <laughs> so who's this fucking guy, Gorn and Strachan? <laughs> and then come on the phone, he's like, Gorn and Strachan here. And I was like, yeah. Gordon Strachan. Yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't know no Scottish people. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Go on. And then he's like, manager of Coventry. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, nice to speak to you. And then I, you know, took a step back and he was like, listen, we we're, we want to sign you. We're interested in signing you. And, you know, at the time we just beat Coventry in the, in the FA Youth Cup in the final. Like, I think it was like 7-2 or something. It was easy work. But um, sure. he said like, you know, come and we, we'd like to sign you. And at the time, like Robbie Keane was there and Robbie Keane was doing some bits for, uh, for, for he done bits for Wolves and then he was doing it for Coventry as well. So I, I was aware of him, you know, he had that crazy celebration. So I was like, he's a serious player. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I kind of went there and Mustafa Hadji was there as well. So I kind of went there for those kind of players, especially Robbie Keane, because I was thinking I'd love to play with him. So I get there and after about three weeks, he's got his transfer to Inter Milan. So I was like, fuck man, who man? Stuck in the East Mids, like. Like, yeah. And then obviously um, Bellas came not long after. And that's the first time I met Craig Bellamy. And Bellas is, you know, he's very much like me. He's from Wales. He's from a humble, humble background, tough, tough upbringing. Um, and, you know, me and him used to room together. So like, you, you can imagine me and him rooming together. I remember like there was, there were some things where like he used to go back to, he used to drive back to Cardiff. Because he, the Bellamy... We, I, I, you know, got back together with at Cardiff and, you know, he had an amazing career at Newcastle, Liverpool, City, you know, and obviously Cardiff, but it is a totally different person. He wasn't focused. What was that Bellamy like? Yeah, he know? wasn't focused. He was like off the rails. He was, you know, going back to Cardiff all the time. He had a, you know, he had a, he had a, I remember he bought, um, so when he come uh, Coventry, he bought um, a probe, Jaguar probe, like, <laughs> He didn't even have a driving license. <laughs> and to be fair, like, I was the same. Like, my parents, my dad had a driving license. My mum didn't have a driving license. I didn't even know you needed a driving license. Like, we was just, I was like, if you've got the money to buy a car, buy a car. Like, okay. people, my friends, they didn't have driving license. They had cars. So I just thought it was like, it was normal. And then I remember, like, uh, Gordon Strachan said to him, like, have you got a driving license? And he was like, <laughs> and he was like, don't drive that car again, kind of thing. But... I mean, <laughs> Bellas was like, I love Bellas. He was a character. He really helped me in my career, especially when it came back to, to Cardiff. Could um, you see though, back at those days, why people might have like have that dislike into him? Yeah, Bellas is one of those players, you love him or you hate him. Um, and, and that's the way I think a lot of people see it. Um, but I remember like when we, was at, when we was at Coventry, I remember we used to have chats and he was like, I almost went Newcastle. And the reason why I didn't is because he hurt his cruciate. Yeah. at the time and I think people I think the reason why he came Cardiff obviously he wanted to come there and do well um, but it was to like prove his fitness because at the time a crucial injury was like a serious injury you know not a lot of people would come back the same it, the, you know having operations then it isn't what yeah. you know it's like having now now it's just like oh you've done that a crucial yeah you're out for nine months but you're going to come back and play still and be the same um, and then I remember Gordon Strachan was playing on, on right wing and left wing. He never played as a forward very much, I don't think, when he was at Car Coventry. And then obviously Coventry got renegated and then he went on to Newcastle and then he was unbelievable. And that's where he like yeah. really, really started like performing, playing well in front of New Newcastle fans. I think they got... To they played in Europe. Like, he was unbelievable. Well, it, the, the, well they're in Europe now, but before that, the only time was then with, yeah, with that team. Kieran. Kira um, and Shira. Yeah. Bowyer. Uh, yeah. People like that, yeah. Woodgate. Woodgate, yeah. I think um, he might have been there. Was Fingy, was, um, what's his name again? The centre half. I forgot his name now. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> on the rape charge. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, Big yeah. black beauty. Yeah, yeah. um, uh, his name. We know who it is. We know who it is. We know who it is. But yes, yeah, so, you know, people like that. It was a, it was a great. It was he had a great team there. Yeah, really, yeah. really good team. And I was really happy for him because I was like, this guy has just gone from here. But I mean, again, like he went from here playing with us to like playing with much better players, and he just like his career just took off. So I mean, I was always really like happy yeah. for him. 
You mean, I, w- w- I wanted to talk about your time at Wolverhampton only because of uh, a discussion we've had off camera about like <laughs> managerial changes in Cardiff. Yeah. And it was something I wanted to talk about anyway, but you played under um, Mick McCarthy. Yeah. What, what, what's he like as a, as a manager? So do you know what? He signed me, he signed me initially and I was like, my first initial reactions to Mick was, okay, yeah, he's a strict manager. Um, he's old school. But I was like, you know, he tells you how it is. So I was like fine with it. I think the you know the first my first season at Wolves, we there was no real expectation. Um, so like I went there, and I think I was top goal scorer the first season. I think I only scored like eleven goals or twelve goals or something like that. But I had a good season. I had no preseason at all, and then I went there and just hit the ground running. Um, and there was some young players. Gary Breen was there, really lovely guy. Um, and that was the first season, and then it kind of started going downhill in the second season for some reason. I, I still don't know exactly why. As, as a team or as, with, with the relationship with him? I think the team was pretty much the same, but he was bringing in players that I was just like, why are you signing these players for? And it's not, I'm not even going to pick people out, but they just wasn't the type of players that I would want to play with. And then before you knew it, it was like one of those situations again, like when I was coming up where I'm just a target man. And... Win, 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 win the flick ons, run channels, and again, it's just not my game, right? Are you that type of person that, as a player who, you know, when you're in that team, you're fully invested and watching and 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 bothered by who they're signing and yeah, and, and vocal about that? Yeah, because I think in football you need you need to have a good squad, especially in the championship, to to move forward. There's forty six league games and you know cup games, and you need a good squad to get yourself out of that. Um, so it wasn't like I would say like, why are you signing him for his shit? It was more like, it was just like a, from a personal point of view, I was thinking, what, what, what's the point? But he was just like, he was trying to make me into a player that I didn't want to be. So obviously we used to clash heads based upon that because I was just like, I don't want to play football that way. I want the ball to my feet. Yeah, I'm six foot three, but... I don't want to be heading the ball all the time and winning flick-ons. And I, I came from Arsenal. Arsene Wenger gave me the best lessons as a football player. You know, we, when I was at Arsenal, we didn't even used to, we used to play games where you could, it couldn't go above waist height. Now you're trying to make me be a target man. That is not my strength. Oh, Quinn again. Yeah. So I was like, I didn't like that part. And then he understood that. And he, it got to a point where I think he wanted to play a certain way. He knew that I didn't want to play that way. So now he's trying to force me out of the club. And I was like, I remember, I can't even remember exactly when it was, but I remember like he he said, listen, we 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 want to we want to get rid of you. You're like, you know, one of our high paid players, we we need to get you off the books and bring other players in. So I was like, in my mind, I was thinking, you know what? Fine. That's not a problem. So even then when he said that to me, I was still fine with it. Even though I was like, I was chewing because I was thinking, why do you want these players? to play in front of me for. That's what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah so I was like, I was chewing, but I never said it to him. I just I just said, all right then, fine. And he was like, I'll, I'll let you know when some you know clubs come in for you. And then he started coming back to me and like, talking to me about certain clubs, no disrespect, but he was like, talking Shrewsby and shit like that. I mean, <laughs> stuff like, you know, clubs like that, where I was just like, what, what, are, you, what, what, are, you, what are you thinking here? Like that. So I, that kind of started upsetting me because I was thinking, why are you trying to tout me out to these clubs for? And then um, I said to him, listen, Mick, because now I'm not even calling him Gaffer. I'm calling him Mick because he's upset me now. I'm saying, Mick, I will go to a club that suits me. I'm not going to go and put myself in a position where I'm going to be struggling again, playing this target man stuff. I want to go to a club that suits me. And then Obviously, he heard me say that and you know, I could see in his face he wasn't happy with the way I was talking to him. But I wasn't swearing at him. I wasn't doing nothing. I just told him straight. From my Now I'm thinking about me. I'm not thinking about Wolves. I'm not thinking about you. I'm thinking about me yeah, now. Yeah. Right? And then, um, I, don't, I don't know exactly when it was, but then it must have been at the beginning of the season. We're doing pre-season, whatever. And then he takes his squad, he takes my squad number off me first. So now he's taking my shirt and give it to someone else without even speaking to me about it. So like that is disrespectful in my mind because I'm like, you could have just come to me and said, you know what? Um, we've signed this new player. 
he wants to wear this number, you know, I'm going to give it to him. Fine. But he took it off me without telling me. And then I see someone else wearing my squad number to the point where I was like, why you got my stuff on for? And he's like, oh, this is my squad number. So it's quite awkward. That's rude though. Yeah, it's rude. And then about a week after that, he made me get changed in the youth team dressing room. So now I'm getting changed with the youth team players. I'm not even in the first team dressing room no more. And I, to be honest, I was just like, this guy, man, it was, it was tough. It was tough because I used to go home and, you know, I've still got this, I'm still young, right? So even though I'm in my 20s, i have still young. I've still got that kind of attitude like, I need this, I want this guy to, you know, try and do something to, so I can react, you know? But obviously I had to, you know, I had to stay as professional as I want, but I feel sorry for my wife because I used to go home and vent. I was just angry at that point. This is what I'm saying. So you, Italy, you've played in City. You've played against some of the great Benis, Nestors, Cordoba, like all these great players, like Nakata, Baggio, Shevchenko, Kak, like all of them, all of them. I've got all their shirts at home. And now Mick McCarthy's yeah. making you get changed. In the youth team dressing room. Dress room. And it's not, it's not to say, listen, I'm not, I, no disrespect to these youth team no, players, no. but it's, it's, a, it's disrespectful to me, right? And I'm thinking to myself, this guy. Yeah. So he was like, this, is, this happened over a period of time. So it's not like one week, the next week, the next week. It happened over a period of time. So now that he's, he, he's come to me with these clubs and whatnot, and I'm saying, no, no, no. He, he says, okay, fine. Now he's like making me train by myself. So now I'm like, I'm not even in when the first team are in. I'm coming in the afternoons and we're just running around the pitch with Tony Daly. You're not allowed to do that no more either. You've got to be with at least three players. I think it's a four players. Yeah. Something is, yeah. Now it's like, I, it was just me and him. And then he would start trying to make me like do some, 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 like he, he liked doing a bike ride. So he used to give me some dead bike where like I was riding, the, the, my knees were on the handlebars and like my seat was low and... He was on a, on an actual bike almost. or a, He had a stationary. fucking uh, uh, a mountain bike that had like sixty seven gears or some shit like. Yeah, and it's like yeah, you had the a fucking bike, rally, yeah. and he's taking. He's just trying to break me now. Just you two, just yeah. He would he would take me in the forest in the morning like seven a.m. bike ride stuff like that to just try and break me, and then I'd train in the afternoon with Tony Daly and and you know Tony Daly was a lovely guy to be fair. He just said to me, "Listen, Jay, I don't want to be here doing this with you." But, but who is Tony Daly? He, he's he's a, a he was coach. a fitness coach at the time. He used to play oh, for Aston Villa. He was like a yeah. legend. But he was just like, listen, you've oh, got to do I this for you. You've got, to, you've got to train hard and think about where you're going next. And at the time I was going in training as well with um, Gary Breen and Jamie Clapham. Gary Breen was like, him and, him and Mick McCarthy got on really well. But even Gary Breen was like, listen, you've got to be mentally strong now. This is, this is your test. You've got to be mentally strong and train hard for yourself and get yourself prepared for the next club you go to. So he was really good for me as well. And then it got to a point where... I was cool. I was happy now. I've just kind of turned it around in my mind. So I used to go in now, like, and at the time, like, I was, uh, you know, I was, I, I was just trying to annoy him. So I'd drive in in like a Bentley, you know, I had jewelry on and I'd be like, all right, get, all right, Mick, how's it going, mate? Like that. <laughs> and I would, that would just make him fume because now he's thinking, this boy can't get to me. Yeah. Um, so I'll do things like that. That's the only way I could piss him off without doing Smiling something wave. to get me sacked, right? Yeah. So like, I was just doing things like that. And then um, it got to the point where it was, you know, um, I got a phone call one morning when I was on the way into training. And it was one of those ones, like the Gordon Strachan thing. He was like, hi, it's, it's Dave Jones. And in my mind, I was thinking, Dave Jones? Like, it's Dave Jones. <laughs> His private number as <laughs> well. Loads of Dave Jones. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> private number. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I got permission to talk to you. And I was like, from who? Yeah, <laughs> from yeah. who? And he was like, I'm the Cardiff manager. And I was like, oh, all right. Um, all right, Dave. <laughs> like that. Didn't and he know was, who he was before then. No, no, at the time, because he came on the phone and I just heard some like Scouse accent. And in my mind, it was one of those ones. I wasn't expecting it, right? So in my mind, I was going training, I had my music on. And then it came through on the, on the you know, on the phone, on the car. And I was just like, private number. I was like, this is strange. And then he said, oh, it's Dave Jones, Cardiff manager. And I was like, oh, all right. And I, my, in my mind straight away, I thought, I hope he wants to sign me. Because now I'm like... That, well, this is the thing. Like, I, at, the, at the time, he just said, I got permission to talk to you. So I hadn't heard any. I, I haven't heard anything else. In my mind straight away, I was thinking, hold on, Cardiff, Cardiff are a good team. Like, every time I play against them, it's tough. They play football. So in my mind, I was thinking, I hope he like, want, wants to sign me. And he was like, listen, turn your car around, get yourself down to Cardiff. 
And I was like, there and then. There and then I'm on the motorway going to Wolves. And he said, turn the car around, get yourself down to Cardiff. So I call my I call my wife and I say, babe, listen, I, I think Cardiff want to sign me. I'm, I, I've been told, you know, to turn the car around and get down there. She was like, go. I was like, perfect. So I, I get down there. And I remember he was sitting there. Wilco was there. And uh, Terry Burton was there. Yeah. And a- a- Alan Armstrong, the fitness coach, and they was all there. And he just said, listen, and at, sorry, at the time, Terry Burton had, you know, ties with Arsenal as well. Um, and I remember he said to me at the time, he said, listen, you're underachieving for the ability you have. You should be embarrassed to be sitting here having this conversation with me. But I'm going to give you the stage. You, you're the one that's got to go and earn it now and turn your career around. So in my mind, like, I, I'll be honest with you, like, it gave me goose pimples because it's the first time someone really challenged me as a player and just gave it to me like 100% straight. And um, I remember coming away from there thinking to myself, okay, I need to make myself indispensable now. That was the first time I, that was my first, you know, interactions with, you know, with Cardiff, with um, Peter Risdell and, Great set of lads, Glenn Leuvens, Roger Johnson, Glenn Darren Lewins. Purse, Gavin Ray, um, um, Norts. No, I love Norts. Um, Peter Whittingham. Like it was a great bunch of lads straight from the get go, and it, it it was one of those situations where I just went into the club and it's like I've met everyone before. You know, I knew everyone. That's what it was like. They just welcomed me straight away. Steve McFowl was really good as well. Class, like, oh, oh, there was some really good there players at the time. there. So yeah, McCormack had just signed as well. Yeah, okay. McCormack had just signed. And I remember he was saying to me about Ross, he was like, you know, we signed this player. He could be, he could be special. He said, we, you know, we want to play you up front with him. And anyway, I come off the bench and I had a, there was a, a, a I had a, a few runs. I had a shot on goal and we ended up drawing 2-2, but I played well when I come on. And I went to see him. Um, so that was on a Saturday. I went to see him on the Monday and I just said to him, I said, Gaffer, like, why was I on the bench? Like, what do I have to do to get in the team? So now I'm not I'm not saying to him, what are you talking about? I was just saying, what do I have to do to get in this side? And he's like, listen, you've trained really well. But he said, I just wanted to play the team that's played together a lot of the time. Um, so I was like, fine. And then, you know, as a few games went on, I started, you know, becoming the permanent fixture in the team. Um, you know, and I really enjoyed it. Joe Ledley's there at this point. And, you know, he was great for me because he was like the, the midfielder that would get forward and support me. And he could run. He was always so up and So Ramsey's down the pitch. gone by this time to Arsenal. Yeah, Ramsey, Ramsey's left that season. Yeah. So the season I it, came, so he's it, left. Was it the F, FA Cup so final after the F, before? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. I'm yeah. sure that was his last season, wasn't it? The dinners, like with the wives, you know, a few times a month. Um, and then obviously... You know, we was going out with the boys like a few times a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But good night, good. Out. Yeah, I love it, mate. I used to be out. For people that listen to this from Cardiff, I'm sure they'll message you after. They used to see me all the time because I was out. But Balling. Dave Jones, Dave Jones, one thing I liked about Dave Jones and, you know, I've I've always been one of those people, you know, give me give me a bit of leeway. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and, yeah. and he did. I didn't ask for it, but he said to me like, listen, if he said, you can do whatever you want to do from from uh, Monday to like Saturday, for example, after the game, Saturday to Wednesday. But after that, I need you in your house. I need you preparing for the game. You can do whatever you want as long as you perform. So straight away in my mind, okay, you've given me that freedom now. You're treating me like a man because I think overall, like regardless of being a football manager, coach, whatever you are in a football club, you, I'm still a man you're still a man. You still got to give me respect of as course. a man. Mick McCarthy didn't give me that. So that's why I was like pissed off about it. But then I went to to Cardiff and and Dave Jones gave me that straight away because he I, he, he was a great man manager. He, he, he had to treat certain people one way, certain people another way. Certain people didn't like that he treated me the way I he treated me and, and Chops and other people, but that's the way he got the best out of us. So you seen him treat other, other players, other you know. I, the thing is, at the time when I was there, I didn't even, I didn't even feel like he was treating me differently, like, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't, 
Uh, Chops was a bit different. Chops would ask for days off and stuff like that to get back to Newcastle. You know, I know he had a son there. So he want, he might want extra days off, but then he was going up there and, you know, I'm sure he did see some, but he, he was he was partying as well. Um, but for me, I, I didn't leave Cardiff. So from when I arrived at Cardiff, I was living in the Vale of Morgan for like, I don't know, probably about six months. No way. Yeah, so I didn't leave. I said to my wife, I said, you got, because we had a house in like Solihull. So like I said, you got to come down and come and go, like, um, and it was it was good because like obviously. Is that when you started learning golf, and actually, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it was just there. So I just like go to the range sometimes, especially in the summertime. Like, surprise some of the, the Welsh boys didn't try finding a Welsh no, nun or something. Do you know the thing was some of the boys was like some of the boys were like, oh, let's go to the range because obviously the training pitch yeah, was across. like across the road. So it was like, oh, do you fancy going to the range, especially in the summer, like. Um, and the physio, the physio, Sean, he, he loved golf as well. Mark Kennedy, Mark, I love Mark Kennedy. That boy is so funny. Like we caught some real, real jokes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great club to go to. And I'm, you know, I, I, I'm still in contact with Dave, Dave Jones now. Like we play golf sometimes together. He? Like he's a, yeah, he's really good. Like I've, I see him like, you know, the beginning of the year, um, played golf together. I've seen him a few times. He came down to play golf at my club. That's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah, he so built like, that relationship from that. Yeah, exactly. Because I just respect wonderful. him. Like, I, I, you know, I even call him Gaffer. Like, I, I've got utmost respect for Dave Jones. He helped turn my career around and he gave me that by just by giving me the stage. Yeah, he, you know, again, I didn't notice him treating me differently. But, I mean... I think other players that I played with would say he did. So do you think Cardiff is where you turned things around and really made your career? Yeah, because I just said to myself, listen, I just said, I need to make myself... First of all, I had targets. I was like, I need to get in this team. Once I get in the team, I need to make myself indispensable. Once I make myself indispensable, I need to be like scoring goals and being like one of the main players, the first name on the team sheet. If I'm honest, I think the first you know, 10 games. I don't think I, I don't even, I don't think I scored for, I don't, I didn't score for ages. Patience. And then I scored against Coventry, I think it was. Yeah, you did. And then it just happened. And then I was like scoring and then I was like, as if I wasn't scoring, I was assisting. Um, and me and Ross McCormack, we grew up, we, we built up a great partnership. Um, I really enjoyed playing with him. And we was, we was, I think we missed out the season like on goal difference of getting into the playoffs. playoffs. But that was, I think that was kind of like a success. I don't think there was any expectation that we would get into the playoffs. When we came back the second season, now there's expectation. We finished outside by goal difference. Now we need to be in the playoffs. Well, maybe we should just go straight into that. Like, why, why, why do you think... Obviously, we know what happened in the playoffs, but like, yeah. what, what, what do you think we were missing in that? I think to, to I be, don't know how we never went. To, to be honest, what I mean from, I don't think our squad was strong enough. I think we had like thirteen, fourteen at best players that could step in, and there wouldn't be a big difference. But then the rest of them, there was like, there's a difference now. You know, you could tell, you could see the team was weaker. Um, and I think that cost us. But remember, we played Leicester, didn't we? We played Leicester in the semi-final, and that game went to extra time, the penalties. Yeah. Right. So I remember playing in that game, and I, I, that was such a great game to be a part of. That's probably apart from that, the derbies. So obviously, the next day now, I kept no sorry. I came in from the from the from uh, the celebrations, walking around the pitch, and all that. You know, gas speaking to the fans. I was so happy. But even when I was walking around, I could feel my calf. I was thinking, man, is this tightness or is this like an injury? So I went to Sean afterwards and I said, Sean, listen, I think I've twinged my calf, man. I need to go for a scan. So I went for a scan on Monday and they was like, listen, you've got a, a grade one tear in your calf. Ugh. And I was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it because I'm like, I think the, f the playoff final was like, is either a week or two weeks. I can't remember after the last game. Yeah, it wasn't long. And, you know, a grade one tear generally is about two weeks. So for that two weeks leading up to the game, I didn't run, I didn't train, nothing. It was just like treatment, massage, you know, calf raises, stuff like that. I didn't, never went on the field. Um, I was on the, the, the exercise bike. And then 
I think on the Thursday leading up to the game, I had a little jog outside and it felt all right. And then on Friday, I trained with a team, full, full training. And I felt, this is good, man. I feel sharp. It's not, no pain at all. Um, now we get down to London and we stayed at the Landmark Hotel. And um, again, it felt, it felt all right. And then uh, we went down for dinner and I came back upstairs. And as I was coming up the stairs, I felt my calf get tight again. So I was like, shit, man. Like, is it in my mind? It's going through my mind now. Is this tightness or is this the injury that's kind yeah. of there? But then it kind of, I woke up, kind of went away. So I was like, oh, I must be the tightness. Anyway, we get to the stadium, we're doing the warm up. It feels great in the warm up. So I'm like, I'm feeling like, okay, this is it, man. We're going to win this game. And I really thought we was going to win this game. And that, we're playing Blackpool. And even though Blackpool got into there, they're, they're in there, you know, they, they got in there. They snuck in there. They but they're, in, in, they're there. in good form now. But I was like, I was really confident about winning. I, th- 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 there was no doubt in my mind at all. We play, we play, we were very if we play decent, we're going to win the game. Just decent. We don't have to have the best game of our life. If we play decent, we're going to win. We're going to score goals. We always scored goals. Um, and then after about 10 minutes, I jumped for a ball when I landed and I felt it like just, my my leg felt like jelly. Like, and I, I knew that I've done it. And like, I even tried to stay on. I think I still played like an extra five minutes and I was just literally hobbling around the pitch. And I said to like, Dave, Dave Jones, like, I can't, I can't go on, man. And then, then he was like saying to me, you know, have, have a, you know, the steroid injection to make you not feel pain. And, and Sean was like, it's a muscle. It's not like it's a joint or a twisted ankle. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna affect him. Right. He, he's not, he's still not going to be able to play because he's, his calf's not functioning properly. So in my mind, I was on the pitch and I was thinking, Ross McCormack's on the, on the bench. You know, he's, he's like a great player. You know, I'm going to come off, but I've seen Ross play really well with chops and, you know, we could still win the game. So in my mind, I came off and then he brought on Dixon or Tuhu. And I thought that was a bit strange. Yeah. And there's no disrespect to Dixon because, you know, he worked hard and he came, but he was a bit raw, if I'm honest. Um, and obviously Ross McCormack was a baller. He was a player. He could score free kicks. He had vision. He could dribble. He was strong because he was stocky as well. Um, and he didn't bring him on. And I just didn't, I didn't understand that. And even like afterwards, I, I said, why, what, 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 why didn't you bring on Ross? And he was like, one of the biggest stakes of my career. I don't, I don't know. I just had a feeling. I've seen who was here. What's his name? He does the uh, under the cosh. Played oh. with you. Oh, wow. John. Is it? What's his name? Oh, um, Parkin. Parkin. Have you heard the story with Ballamy and all that? And he's like, uh, yeah. Oh, I think I've. He's I've having, he was like, mate, what the fuck are you doing with the pass? And he's like, mate, I'm getting paid fucking two. What? It was something funny, like about just the levels he went down, Bellamy, and like playing with John Park and he was the thing is like I mean yeah I think I, I think someone some people got me on, on my Twitter about that but it's like you know what I've I've had a relationship with Bellas like my, my first encounter with Bellas like I said when I was like 18 yeah he was like in his you know 20 or 21 we'll or just whatever. roll we'll just roll yeah so like it was like when he, when we got together me and him would have banter that he he wouldn't no one else could really understand. You had that bond Yes, Yeah, so already. we had that bond. So it was like, he would give me banter, I would give him banter. You know, he said to me, you know, I, I remember he said something like, Chef, uh, you you got sold and we signed Chef de Cucci. Like, fuck, something like that. But it was funny because <laughs> I was like, you know, in my mind, it was like, yeah, that did happen. Like, whatever, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> but the way, the way, from what I, I haven't, I haven't listened to the, to, to, to the thing actually I just heard um, a clip like on my Twitter a few people sent it to me but like in my mind this is me right 
if, if you go around other people and you hear the way someone's talking and you don't like that, you don't like it or you don't like them, are you gonna are you gonna really make an effort with that person to try and speak to them? For me, I'm not. I'm just like that. If I don't like the way you are and I don't like what you stand for, yeah. I don't like you as a footballer. You know, for me, I was I had one goal that season, get to the Premier League, right? And it was one of those situations, again, like we spoke about, you're bringing players in. And in my mind, I'm like, what's he doing there? Kind there was that in Cardiff as well, though. Yeah, so I was like, what's, what's this guy doing here? And, you know, I remember Dave Jones said, like, you know, if, when you're injured, you know, he's, you know, he's going to come in and, you know, do something similar to you. He's, he's got good feet. And to be fair, he did have good feet. Talking but, about... John Parkin. Yeah. He did have good feet, but he was 25 stone. <laughs> and it was like, who, you know what I mean? It was like... In my mind, I couldn't, I didn't understand the value of that. Now there's yeah. me, there's Chops, there's Ross McCormack. And John Parkin. And John Parkin. And I'm like, I, I couldn't understand it. So for me, it, was, it wasn't like, I, I just had nothing in common with him. I didn't want to, I didn't really, like, I'll be polite and I'll say morning and hello, but I didn't have nothing in common with him. Like, he's from Yorkshire. Like, what's he going to talk about? A pie and a bud. Like, I'm not into that. I'm into fashion. You know, I'm from London. Like, we like different things. We like different footballers. I have no interest in him at all right so it wasn't like i was being arrogant or anything like that but when i'm on the pitch yeah i i will i will demand certain things and i'll say certain things but we was all like that shops was like that steve mcfowl was like that gavin ray was like that we was all like that but you know i would say things and i would hammer people sometimes in a different kind of way like what are you fucking doing what's that you know certain things and he probably didn't like the way i rubbed him up but i don't care because i went there for a reason me and Bellamy, Bellamy actually really helped me when I was there. I would speak to him a lot. We'd go out together. We'd have a few beers together, meals together. Um, and I'd always pick his brain. Because when he came to Cardiff, obviously now he's, in, he's, he's older, right? He's, in he's his, just come he's from... In his he's in his yeah. 30s. Yeah. He's, he, I think he's come from City. We had this Yeah, he's come from City. He's in his 30s. But now I, I'm with the Craig Bellamy that is disciplined that is training, coming in early, leaving late. He's got his own fitness coach. So for me, I'm looking at him now and I'm thinking, okay, I'm 27 years old. I'm close to 30. I need to start well, you're taking checking it. yourself. Yeah, you? Because so now you I need both to... those young, the, yeah. those young, raw, raggo, yeah, yeah, exactly. rough and ready boys. But now I'm looking at him and I'm saying to myself, I need to, I need to, I need to take this on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I need to start doing the gym training. Like, recovery properly, you know, recovery drinks, ice baths, stuff like that, that I'd never even think of doing before. <laughs> and um, so he was great for me. He helped me. Um, obviously, when I went away with England, he was speaking to me before, you know, he was saying to me, like, when you go there, don't feel like, you know, feel like you belong. Go there and He's show them what you've got. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So he was very, very supportive of me. Um so like when, when when I hear all these things like like what this guy was saying, I was just like, it doesn't even bother me really. This is the first time I'm even talking about it. Yeah, but I don't even give no one airtime about it because I'm just like, you don't really know me as a person. So I don't really care. You yeah. know what I mean? In my mind, I just was about one thing, like getting promoted. I wanted the best players possible to be at the club. I didn't think he was. And that was that. Yeah. Simple. Um, but I mean, everyone else at the club, you know, there was Chris Burke, again, Ross McCormick, right. Shops, Bellamy, Aaron Ramsey come on loan, Peter Whittenham, like that core, um, Gavin Ray, um, um, you know, R Roger Johnson, um, even... Um, was Hudson there? Hud was there, um, Anthony Gerrard. So you was here with Gerard. Yeah, yeah. I, so you I, just missed the Malky team then. The, the, yeah, the so went. I missed the Malky team. But do you know what the thing is? I, even with Anthony Gerard, Gerard, like he was, he, he he wasn't the fastest. He just looked very, like Steven. Very, very <laughs> funny. He could ping a ball, um, and he he, he had a, he, there was a period where he he played well for Cardiff, um, but then there was other people that I just didn't really take to. McNaughton were there, was he? Norts was there. He was. Yeah, you Norts said was there. Yeah, Norts, like we we had such a close group. You know, Call of Duty came out. We was always like we'd we'd talk about Call of Duty before training, do our training. It'd be like, listen, I'm gonna be at home at one. Make sure you're on at one thirty. So we'd all we'd all play like Call of Duty. We'd be sitting on it until like ten o'clock wow. at night, playing it like with the headphones on and everything. So we even when we wasn't at training, we was at home yeah. kind of with each other, like talking online and whatnot. Yeah. 
I think I think Chops actually scored a goal and done a celebration where he's like, you know, <laughs> a Call of Duty. Yeah, 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 no, one, no one really yeah, clocked it. No one really it. clocked it at the time because it was a new game out. Right, no one really. It wasn't like it is now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had a really you and Chops. Close, what was you know everyone Chops talks like about. Chops. I you know I I love Chops. He's he's a character. Um, he's he, he's wild. Um, but he knows where the back of the net is. And on the field, we had a great. A great bond. Actually, off the field, we did as well. If I'm being honest, he had he had uh, he he could upset me. One time, he upset me, and I ended up giving him a few digs in training. And then he and then he went home the next day. Came in with friends again. Um, but we had a great relationship on the pitch, off the pitch. But again, there was like there was like Roger Johnson. Again, he was he was one of the ones that as well. Like he'd have loads of arguments. Um, he. He, he spoke in a certain mm. way that could run people up the wrong way as well. But I think that group as a whole was really good. There was people like Percy that was really mature. And he's a big guy, obviously. But um, um, Shimaka, he was there. These Shimaka. people, they was really good for the dressing room. Because at the dressing room, yeah. there was like people like me, Chops and Ross McCormack and people like that, that kind of wanted to like, go and perform, go out partying, come home. And um, then there was other people that was yeah. you know, sensible, that was like family people. That yeah, was, Pierce, Pierce, yeah. he fucking so like, grew, didn't he, from? Yeah, so like he, there was the kind of people that would be like, Jay, you know, just leave it. It's all right, you know, I understand, but just leave it, let it go, yeah. kind of thing. And that's that's the way it was. I think when, you, when I think about Dave Jones, Dave Jones was able to be the manager he was because the dressing room kind of took care of itself. All it was is like he there was fines, there was stuff like that. There was discipline in the team, like no late. There wasn't I don't remember many people being late. Like if it was, it would be like five minutes or something like that. It was nothing crazy. So there was discipline within the change room, but that was because of the players. And then all the manager had to do was, you know, pick the sides. Coaches were great. I think it was a re- it was unfortunate that we didn't get get promotion. But I think yeah. overall, like I remember we we used to go out and it'd be like you know, we play on a Wednesday night and straight away, I'll meet you at Revs at 11. <laughs> you know, that kind of way. Yeah, and Chopper we, was, we, Chopper's we, car was always on time. Yeah, we just go, <laughs> we just, go, we went straight out. Like, and it was, do you know what I think? Living in Cardiff was funny because at the time I had my private number plate on my, on my Range Rover. And I remember like, I remember I parked my car somewhere one time and I, I went back to it. And I was, I was going back, the guy was writing a ticket and he was like, oh, Jay Wolfway, Cardiff City. And I was like, yeah, he's like, oh, don't worry about the ticket. Like that, and he just kind of threw it away. And I was like, <laughs> funny. No. And then after that, I was like, I wonder if like, I can, no, I could leave my car anywhere then. So then I started, <laughs> I started like leaving my car anywhere and I, I never got a ticket. So I'd leave it in like a bus stop. I'd leave it in a doctor's bay and I'll leave it everywhere. But I never got a ticket from it. So it was right. quite funny. And like, even I got a speeding ticket one time coming over the, over the bridge. And that, I had to go into the police station and, take my take my license and all that and I was like oh don't worry about it you know we ain't gonna give you a ticket and I was like oh thanks like that kind of thing but it what? was it was great to live in Cardiff like yeah. we was a great team but living in Cardiff was great at the time obviously there was a period when you know there was a drama about when we played Middlesbrough and if we had have won that game I can't remember we would have been in the automatic positions or whatever and there was yeah uh, a few things came out about us being out on a Thursday night before a Saturday game. And it's true to be honest, we were, but it wasn't Dave Jones's fault. Dave Jones was saying, don't do like a, you know, the end of season party or whatever it's called, yeah. or running up to the end of the season. Don't do that on a Thursday night because the guys are probably going to have a few drinks at the do and then they'll probably go out afterwards. So don't do it. And he didn't want it, but Vincent Tan insisted that it was going to be on a Thursday night it happened that way. And then a few of us went out. I was one of them. And to be honest, quite a lot of us went out. And like I was never a really big drinker anyway. But nonetheless, I was out. So people see me out. And then obviously, I think we I think we lost the game against Middlesbrough like 2 nil. Like, what are you doing out, yeah? Yeah, and then, and then off the back of that, we never got promoted. So then it kind of went back to that point where it was like, that was a turning point of the season. Yeah. But let's talk about the fans, eh? Let's talk about Ninian Park. 
because you've played at both stadiums. Yeah. What was your favourite? For the atmosphere, Ninian, nothing's better than Ninian. Ninian was unbelievable. Obviously, the pitch it was like a mound, right? It was like you could, yeah. when you're if you, when you're sitting on the bench, you couldn't see the other touchline because yeah. it kind of went like that. Um, obviously, if you could put the um, city ground pitch into Ninian, <laughs> I mean that would be the perfect stadium. I won't even want to leave Ninian because teams used to come there and straight away it was like a cauldron. It, we had that advantage. You know, you know, people, you hear people say, you know, the fans are your 12th man. It was really like that for us. You know, we played Arsenal in the, in the, one of the cups. I forgot now. I think we got a draw there. Like, and they was like one of, at the peak of the, like Van Persie was playing. Like they had a Colo Tour. Like they had a lot of players playing at the time. And we got a draw. People didn't like coming to play against us there. And it was really good. I had a really good rapport with the fans. You know, you could, I could be on the pitch and I could take a throw in them fans could actually touch you yeah you know and um i think that was like amazing i used to love going to the to the stadium um you know coming out i've always been one of these players that i'll sign everyone's autograph until you know the last person i'll stand there in the snow rain whatever it is we've lost we've won um because i honestly feel that you know i want people to have i want people to remember me and you know i've seen some players be like no nah, i don't sign autographs off that like kind of thing but I've I've never been like that and that was pretty much from Ian Wright Ian Wright was like that he'll sign everyone's autograph and I remember he signed mine when I was a kid he probably would remember I was like about I don't know nine years old or whatever you remember and I remember that so yeah. I feel like I want you to know when I finish own. I want you know this kid that was probably nine ten years old when I was playing that yeah, kind of, of course. to have the same you know the same thoughts about me so like it was the fan, the, the relationship I had with the fans was was always really, really good. South Wales Derby. Love playing in them. Love playing in them. I remember my first one, I was like, the first one, I, I think something happened where like, I remember we went to stay in Swansea and someone, they, we was going to go and stay in Swansea and then all of a sudden something happened where in the newspaper, wherever they're staying, we're going to set the fire alarms off. <laughs> so straight away, like they changed it. And we ended up every, every year when I was there, we ended up just traveling to Swansea, but the atmosphere was unbelievable. That Derby goes under the radar. And it's purely for the fact that it was most of the derbies were in the championship. But if in, in, in terms of like, I've, I've been in stadiums and I've sat there in North London derbies. I've sat there in, you know, um, um, Manchester derbies, Man United against Liverpool. Like I've sat there and watched those kind of games, but it doesn't top Swansea Cardiff. It just doesn't. There's a real hatred there, like real hatred. And I didn't realize at first, but then <laughs> as it went on, you start to understand. Like if I if I was to say I'm going out and if if I, I honestly believe if I was to go out in Swansea, something would happen to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something yeah, yeah. would happen to me, and. You know, I, obviously I never went to Swansea. The only time I was in Swansea was um, um, to, <laughs> to play. To, to play, yeah. That was the only time. Um, but, you know, I, you didn't really see... Like, I, I think a couple of times I see some Swansea players in Cardiff, but they just got ignored. It was like, yeah. They were none of the main ones. They were, like, they, yeah, they yeah, weren't yeah. like Ashley Williams. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't like Ashley, Ashley Williams, Williams or anyone you know, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, we were just on... Uh, we were on Sky Sports recently. It was Derby. Nathan Dyer, yeah, you can't Darby. see him because he's too small. Dyer, I love Nathan Dyer is a quality yeah. guy. I played in a charity match with him as well recently. But I was doing Sky Sports with um Ashley. Ashley recently for the Derby. Um when when Where I was in Cardiff absolutely schooled Swansea. That was embarrassing from Swansea, to be honest. Um but yeah, we was talking about the derbies and like he he was saying I used to like I, I used to like I, I didn't used to like look forward to them games at all. And I was kind of like, I didn't really used to look forward to them before it. But when you're on the pitch, it's like an amazing atmosphere because yeah. you're in it and you know, worst case scenario, it has to be a close game and you have to put in a hundred percent effort. If it's like a two, three, nil, four, nil, four, one, you know, you're getting grief for the rest of the season until you play again. Yeah. Bragging and then right. yeah, bragging right. And then even when you play again, the lead up to it is like, oh, they got spanked, whatever. But it never happened with us. All the games were always really close. And there was always tough games. And to be fair, I used to play, obviously, Ashley Williams used to mark me. 
obviously I was playing up against him a lot of the time and he's smaller than me, but he was so difficult to play against because he was strong and he had spring like, and the way they set up was really good at the time. There wasn't many teams playing football like them, even in the Premier League, they was knocking around, yeah. they was doing the total football. And if I'm honest, they had a lot more possession than us, but we was always a threat because we had that individual ability as well. I think I only scored against, I think I scored against Swansea once and we lost three, two. But still, I was like, it was a great game to play in. Um, and even I th throughout my whole career, I mean, that was that was a great game. I think that one and and that that derby tops it for me. The the really, yeah. That tops it for me. And Wolves against West Brom, that that that's a pretty good derby as well. But Cardiff against Swansea, for me, playing in them, that was like the best. Was there any anyone uh in the city? Team during you was during your time at Cardiff. You didn't you didn't get on with you hated or or you didn't get on with. No, it's not that I hated people. It was just no, like there was people, that's the wrong word. There was people. No, it's not that I didn't. I didn't really dislike anyone. There was players that I just thought weren't good. You know that, and that, and, that, and I think a lot of players will feel like that about certain players in the team. But what can you do? Like, yeah. um, there was people that was a bit cold and a bit not cold, but a bit. Um, didn't have the same kind of pet like Peter Eckelman, really nice guy, but you didn't really get nothing from him. Yeah. Gabor Jupez, you didn't really get nothing from him. Very kind of quiet and reserved. Um and but then there was the loud guys. And a lot of a lot of the dressing room was loud. Like you said, Norts, Huds, um, Mark Kennedy, Roger Johnson, um, Darren Purse had a voice, even though he was like, you know, he was a bit more reserved. Um, Mac was a yeah. bit more reserved, but what an unbelievable player! He was so good, um, Steve. Yeah, Steve. If, I mean, if Steve come about now, he could play in most teams now. Like, he, I, I'm not afraid to say that he would. He's better than someone like Calvin Phillips. Like, really? he was unbelievable. He kept it moving. Didn't really lose the ball. Had a great left foot. He's one of the people that when I see him have the ball, I can make runs. Wits the same. Um, Berkey. He's really Chris good Burr. up and down the right. He used to get good crosses in, good on product. Um, Joe Ledley used to play on, on, on the left for sometimes and, and kind of come inside. It, it, there, there was no one that I would really say that I really disliked. There's just people that I didn't have nothing in common with. Yeah. And, you know, John Parkin was one of them. Um, I mean, there, there, there was a few people, but obviously <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just say Parkin now because he brought my name up and you're asking me yeah. about it. So, you know... Ed, Ed, Eddie Johnson was there. I, Quincy, I didn't really like. I didn't really like Quincy. I know I liked him as a person, but I didn't because because he was like in training. There was, he's unbelievable. He's beating everyone. He's going around the whole team. On a Saturday, he wasn't doing it. So for me, because he wasn't doing it, I was Round kind of like, this guy's fucking pissing me off. Yeah. Man. And then you, him and Eddie Johnson were like really close in the dressing room, but Eddie was like professional work hard, train hard, practice shooting afterwards. So even though it was a bit difficult for Eddie Johnson to, to play because me, I was playing there, Chops was playing there, he still remained um, professional and he was still trying to get in the team. Whereas Quincy was one of those ones who turn up late and, you know, and he, 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 he produced in training, but he wouldn't be able to do it on a weekend. And it was just became like really frustrating <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah. So he was one that, I would say is frustrating. Not to say that he was a good guy still, but he he was frustrating me. What's your most memorable uh, moment moment up uh um, City? To be honest, like I think when people ask me about Cardiff, I always kind of revert back to how I got there. Because how I got there was memorable for me because it changed my life. He gave me something to think about and he he gave me the platform to go and play the way I wanted to play. The only thing he said to me was, and if I'm honest, he said to me, you can do what you want to do on the pitch. Go and affect the game exactly how you see the game. But I need you in the box as well. So when we get crosses in, you need to be in the box. That's how you're going to score goals as well. So I was like, fucking great. This is a compromise. I can go and do what I want to do, float around the pitch, get involved in play. Because that's what football is to me. Football is playing football. Like, I admire what... Harland is doing it's unbelievable his goal scoring ability his movement unbelievable 
but I don't admire him as a football player. No. Because there's a difference between a football player and a goal scorer. And professionals would understand that. Um, so for me, I was never one of those players that could just go for a game, touching the ball eight times, scoring the 90th minute and be happy with that. I'd prefer to play a good football match and get an assist because I just enjoy football. I love yeah. football. I'm a purist. Um, so when he said that to me, go and influence a game and, and um, just make sure you get yourself back in the box, I was like, fantastic. And then Wilco was the one that started, um, got me into like timing my head in and stuff like that. So I scored a, I scored some more headers where I didn't really score that many headers for my height. Um, but he started helping me work on that part. So it was just like a, uh, a relationship made in heaven, to be yeah. honest. I think in terms of being on the pitch, the most memorable time is when Bella scored mm. that, the winning goal Swansea. against Swansea. Brilliant. That was, I was like, there. unbelievable. Like, I mean, I'm talking about it now and I'm getting goose pimples because it was the feeling was like, we've done it. We've beat them on their patch. And it was like... Late. Yeah, late in the game. We knew, Once you score that late, you've won. <laughs> yeah. Right? And it's, now it's basically kickoff and then that's it. <laughs> um, so it was perfect. Obviously, I was involved in the goal as well. It was just like a, a memorable moment. That would be, the, um, you know, obviously me going there, but then on the pitch, that would be the most special moment. Before I talk about you leaving Cardiff, I want to talk about something that, you know, I don't think anyone has, has done to, to date. Uh, which is your your call up to England? Yeah. So, like, we're from Wales, so like, you know, we're used to having probably a League One player and a fucking in defence <laughs> or you know a Championship player paying for Wales. But to be called up to the England squad, with the England team, yeah, um, whilst playing in the Championship, yeah, is unheard of. Well, yeah. it was unheard of. It was unprecedented. Yeah. I mean, it was it was unbelievable. And to be honest, like when people say to me, like, it, it's still like, it's surreal. It's surreal because I think only David Nugent was the only other one. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but it was, there's not many. And it was like, it was surreal because I, I remember I was playing and I was scoring and I was playing really well. And then Dave Jones had a, had an interview and he, someone said, I don't know, something along the lines of how good can Jay be? Something like that. And he said, he's got unbelievable quality. Um, his ability is amazing. He's quick. He can score goals, great left foot. He could definitely play for England one day. And then off the back of that, traction started to happen. You know, all of a sudden I was on the back of the the Welsh newspapers. The Echo. Like wearing like a, you know, looking England like a, top. yeah, like an no, it's England, sh you know, English shield, like with a, <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. And I'm like, a knight. yeah, knight. Yeah. And I was like, man, I was like, you know, nothing's gonna, like yeah, I was just like, nothing's going to come of this. And then people asked me after I played other games and said like, what do you think of his comments leading up to games? And I was like, listen, it's, you know, it's great. Um, but you know, I'm just concentrating on playing. And, uh, it just seemed to like just grow traction. And as time went on, like this season, I was still scoring goals and I was still playing well. Um, and then one one game, um, Card I mean, Dave, Dave came downstairs into the training room before a game and was like, listen, um, Fabio Capello's number two's here to watch you. And I was like, shut up, man, stop it. I'm fucking trying to get ready for the game. And I was like, seriously, seriously. And I was like, seriously, lad? Yeah. And I was like, Gaffer, just leave it, mate. I'm trying to focus. And he went away and he came back. He was like, look. And he showed me the seating arrangement. And I see Franco Baldini, I think his name is. He's Italian. Yeah. It's not, it's, not my, like, it's not my father. So now in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't really get nervous before games. I listen to my music. I'm getting myself zoned in. I just... <laughs> I start paying attention to the game and what I want to do when I'm in the tunnel. But before that, I'm just getting myself, I'm relaxed. And um, now I'm like, now I'm worrying in my mind. I'm thinking, man, I, I could actually be involved in this England squad if I, if I go out there and perform. Now I'm like nervous. And uh, I can't remember if I scored or whatnot, but the game just kind of went past. I think I did score. And then he came to another game and then another game. And I'm like, Things are going well now. And people started to recognize that he's in the stadium. 
because, you know, his name's there. Dave Jones is talking about it. And I remember we played Scunthorpe away and it was the weekend that um, Audley Harrison was fighting David Hay. And it was also the weekend. You know, there's a weekend before the preliminary... No, so the, the preliminary squad is announced it, announced before. Yeah. So like, I, I knew I was in that because I was in the preliminary. And I was like thinking, fuck it, no. I'm just happy to be in this preliminary squad. Like, this is unbelievable. Like, if it, if I don't, <laughs> I, I've still been considered. Considered, yeah. And then we played Scunthorpe away. And I was just thinking, okay, if I score a couple of goals in this, I've got a real chance that I'll get named in the squad. And I think after about 15 minutes... <laughs> Someone broke down the right, crossed the ball, hit me, hit me in my thigh and went in. It's like, fucking no, this is like good. And then I ended up scoring two goals. We won the game. And I remember we, like there was about 10 of us going to the fight. And I remember we was like in the, I think it's a Manchester stadium. I don't know, wherever the arena is. And um, I'm, we're sitting there and I'm just waiting. I'm thinking, why isn't no one calling me, man? It's like seven o'clock, you know, still nothing. Yeah. And I'm thinking I'm probably not going to be in the squad. And then, you know, the fighters, the fighters start coming out about eight or something like that. And then I get a text on my phone saying like, you're in the England squad, meet at the Grove Hotel tomorrow at 1.30. So in my mind, I just oh. stood up and I was like, yes. And I like cheering and people like looking at me like, the fight ain't even started yet. So like, I started telling all the boys and all the boys were like, I'm so happy for you, well done and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the plan was that we were going to go out in Manchester afterwards. So straight away the fight finished and obviously I just drove back to London and then, you know, met up with a squad. But like, it was it was surreal wow. when I was like driving there. Like it was unbelievable the feeling of like getting in the England squad while I was playing in the championship. That recognition was really good. And it's not to say like there was still like... There were some injuries, like Rooney wasn't there, but there were some like players like Crouchy was there, Carlton Cole was there, who at the time, they were in the England squad regularly. Andy Carroll got called up for the first time, but they got promoted the season before. Yeah, yeah. Lee so was, now they're in the Premier fire. League. So yeah. he was on fire as well. So he got called up. Um, Jordan Henson got called up for the first time. So like for me, it was like... It was like a new breed. Of... Yeah, this is unbelievable yeah. for me. It was just like the most... You know, I'm not, I'm not patriotic really. I didn't think of myself as patriotic. But then when I actually, you know, was there before the game, you know, singing the national anthem in front of my friends and my family. It's at Wembley. This is North London, North Northwest. This is North London, basically. Like everyone I knew. So, you know, like for me, I've always been one of these people that I made it, but it wasn't a case of I made it. It was like we made, we made it. it. So like I took my friends on holiday. I would pay for my, you know, holidays, nights out everything because we made it it wasn't just me so I looked after all my friends and you know they went on to do other things and they're successful in their own rights now but initially it was we made it so when I played for England and I had my friends there my mum and dad there my wife there my son there like it was just like unbelievable and it got me feeling like very patriotic really emotional because I was like there's no that's top playing for your country is the top you know, the percentage of players that actually play football that end up playing for their country is unheard of, especially mate. England. So like for me, it was amazing. And again, thanks to Dave Jones for like giving me that That's platform. why you still chat to my man. Yeah, like it? I've got so much <laughs> respect for him. Like I can't tell you like, and you know, when you really think about it, you got Mick McCarthy on one hand trying to sell me to like Shrewsbury and shit like that and not taking my squad number off me and, and making me get changed, making me train by myself. Dave Jones gives me the opportunity. He lets me play football the way I think football should play. Three years later, I'm playing for England. That shows the quality of a manager to me because you look like an arsehole. How can, how can but, I but, not be good enough for Wolves in the championship? You're trying to sell me to Shrewsbury. Three years later, I'm playing for England. That's a difference. Yeah, well, it shows you both how good Dave Jones is and, and probably how bad McCarthy is. Exactly. But for me, I was just like, that was like um that was the best moment of my career can you understand roy king roy king's pain with, with like the Mick mccarthy stuff and stuff? Right, listen there's, there's there's even more stories i can call him out. he's tried to headbutt players and then get players to apologize to him i won't name him player but he knows who it is and people that was in that dressing room with me will know who it is well he tried to headbutt a player and then 
the player didn't react and just said, you're a shit house kind of thing. And then afterwards, he was trying to get the player to apologise in front of the team to him. And he's like, I'm not apologising. So it's just like, he done he things like that. He done, he done things like that, but nothing, nothing comes out. And do you know what the thing about football is? <laughs> Don't do players, it. Players are always wrong when it comes to a manager, right? But ultimately, loads of managers out there cause problems, but players can't speak out about it to managers because a manager chooses a team. Yeah. Right. Unless you're, I mean, to be fair, like, I don't know the ins and outs of what happened with Jaden Sancho and Ten Hag, but in my mind, I'm kind of with Jaden Sancho because if you've got a problem, why are you airing the problem in public as a manager? Keep it in house. Yeah. Because I would do the same thing. If someone airs me out in public, a manager, I would take it upon myself to have to respond if I don't think it's right or I don't think it's true. That's what he's done. So I don't think that's a bad thing. No. But you can never win those kind of arguments in the eyes of the media or in the eyes of football because that is a manager. I don't think that's fair, to be honest. No, it's it's definitely not. And, you know, it's, it's a shame that, you know, probably these things do come out a little too late, maybe. You know, well, you know, maybe you'll try and get another job somewhere, but if, if you let if you let people know, let it be known. Uh, yeah, I was like, I, I mean, listen. Forewarned. I, yeah, <laughs> I used to watch... Oh, uh, listen, I've seen Warnock at um, Cardiff. And I, I really, a lot of I really like Warnock. I've Loved heard him. some things about Warnock as Yeah, well. no, so have I. But I mean, <laughs> I've seen some things as well. But <laughs> one, thing, one thing I think with him is, again, it's black or white. You know, I like you. I don't like you. I, yeah, you know, yeah, I think yeah. you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna be involved in my squad. No, you're not. And that's the way it is. He's very honest. But, and he, he's not, he says it in a nice way. He said, listen, you know, I've seen him say, listen, you know, you're not for me, but, you know, I hope you get another club. Things like that, which I think is good. Not the way, like, I, I feel like I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking way too much about this guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to give, I don't want to give him airtime well, like I, I wanted to say to you, I did want to say like, the, you, know, you know, when he, when he became Cardiff manager. Yeah, I was, I was pissed off because I was like, this guy, why are you giving we going, this guy? We're going, back, we're going backwards. Yeah, because yeah? I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, why are you giving this guy the job? And it's like, I think, I, I would I wanted to see Cardiff City move forward because I'm looking at Cardiff City players and I'm saying you still got decent players like you know I want to see Cardiff City move forward and you're signing a manager, manager like that that's prehistoric <laughs> and he's a dictator yeah and I don't think that's good for any player especially of that generation like in this generation now you can't have a dictator it just doesn't work you've seen how successful Mourinho was with when he first went to Chelsea and, you know, winning the Champions League, Porto, you know, everywhere he's been, he was successful. But then as he moves into the next generation of players, yeah. where you can't be disrespectful to players and you can't be that hard on their players and, you know, it just hasn't worked out for him recently. He's one of the best managers ever. But even then, you need to evolve. And I think that's what you see with Alex Ferguson. That's why he's so great. Because he evolved. He evolved. He was able to evolve. He brought in number twos that help him Get the adjust. best out, of, adjust. Yeah. Get the best out of those players. That's why he is one of the best managers ever. Arsene Wenger, pretty similar. He 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 was you know very much one of those managers. It put his arm around you and encouraged you all the time. But the coach behind, but him the coach be behind there. him was very much the same. Like you know, he he would go and approach players. The Pat Rices, Neil Banfield, yes, people like that that would just go and speak to the players and like be a bit more friendly because they're you know more of a you know similar age. Let's just say. From the, especially someone like Neil Banfield, um, you probably don't know him, but he was my I've youth team him. coach. He <laughs> he was one of the first team coaches in in Arsenal's first team. But like he he was he was fantastic. But I think, I think again, I roll back to when you're a football player, you just want to have you want to be respected as a man. Ultimately, that's what I take from it. You know, you can leave me out, you can play me, but ultimately, if you want my respect, you have to respect me as well. And that's why I live. Yeah, some coaches look at it like you're still playing in the twelves or something, and they can treat you like you're a naughty boy and stuff. And that's what I felt. Punish, punish you and stuff. That's why I felt. And, and that's why, I'm... You, like you said, you know, in school as well, I wasn't really that anyway, so I didn't yeah. expect to go into the professional capacity and be treated that way as well. Mm. No, no, that's why. That's why I respect Dave Jones so much because he'd done that. Mm. It wasn't just me either. It was like chops. It was, you know, he'd done it with a few players where he just gave them the best the out of them. Even Peter Whittenham. Peter Whittenham was. There wasn't really playing regularly at um, uh, Aston Villa. Um, and he ended up coming to to Cardiff. Again, 
he was very quiet wits, but he's, he's, he had like a dry humor. And I always really got on well with wits. And he was one of those players that I was like, baller. I like training with him. I loved playing with him. Yeah. Um, he was unbelievable. And it's so sad, you know, that, he, that he's passed away in such unfortunate some circumstances. Like, it, I mean, even now it, it really, you know, it upsets me because such a great guy. Um, but great footballer. Um, and even though he had a dry personality, he was like really funny. He would just like say things and it was like, can he just say that kind of thing? But it was, yeah. became Cardiff captain. And, you know, me, me, I remember me and, me and Chops was arguing over being penalty taker. And, you know, there was always a problem about that because I was like, I'm penalty taker. And he's like, no, no, you, you can imagine how me and Chops were going back and forth. In the end, Dave just, Joe Jones said, Wits is the penalty taker. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm good with that because I know he can strike a ball. I know he can win games. Rest in peace to Peter Whittingham. Yeah. For sure. So it, 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 Dave Jones done a, a lot of that for a lot of players there. Like even Stephen McFowl. Like he didn't have the same kind of attitude to me, but he, Dave Jones got the best out of him. Like he was such a good player. I can't tell you. Even Gavin Ray, like... He was like the workhorse in our team, the physical part of our midfield. Again, fantastic player. He, like everyone in that dressing room was, just got on with each other. And that was the main thing. Yeah. Um, you, you, you will for sure always be held in the, in the, in the Cardiff City of uh, Hall of Fame, I would say, Jay. You know what? And I, I'll be honest with you, like Cardiff City and the fans are always in my Hall of Fame. Yeah. Like, you know, I love going to Cardiff. The fans are great. The people are great. Very friendly. Um, and it was it was a real pleasure to play for the club. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how it was going to go when I went down there. First time I've even been to Wales. Yeah. But it was like, that was the best move I ever made in my career. Because it helped catapult my career and take me forward. Um the second best decision I ever made was going to Japan, actually, because it gave me longevity. I got to yeah. see what football is like on the other side of the world. I got to, you know, play against some legends like Iniesta. I mean, I played against Vermaelen, Forlan, um, wow. Sampa, Podolski, because they was all there when I was there. Wow. Like people people Podolski. forget about it. Like you see these Japanese players come now, like Matoma and, you know, um, Yoshida at Southampton. Yeah. You see... Endo, Liverpool, like there's some seriously talented football players in Japan. Minamino. Minamino, Kagawa. Like there's some seriously talented <laughs> players. And you're going to see more and more now coming over because yeah. they're that good technically, physically. Um, they are very fit, um, but they follow instructions to the dot. And I think sometimes it's a good thing, but sometimes it's a bad thing because it almost makes you kind of lose your identity. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... They are, they are very, it was a very good place to go to. Can I ask you, um, was it, you know, that move to QPR, did you feel it was right? Do you, do you regret it? Do you wish you stayed? Well, to be honest, I mean, we didn't even talk about this, have we? So to be honest, so what happened was... Um, Only briefly. Yeah, so what happened was, uh, uh, so dur during the season, I, my, I was in the last year of my contract. Initially, Peter Rizdal annoyed me because I asked for a new contract. He said no. And then even Dave Jones said, we'll see how it goes next year. And I said, do you really want me to be in a position where if I start the season well and start scoring goals, you know, I'm running down my contract now. You're going to be in a position where you have to like potentially give me more money. And he was like, we'll see how it goes. I was like, all right then. So I came back, started scoring goals, as we all know. Got to Christmas and um, Tan, Tan's in there now. And I forgot the guy who he had who was like, I don't know, director of football, wherever he was. He was a rugby man. I forgot his name now. Um, you can you can pluck who that was out. The, yeah, who was the guy that uh, Alice was talking about him when he first came? It's not because Ken's using it now, isn't he? But who was the guy? You have to, you have to pluck it out. You're, I'm, you'll find it. But I'll I can't, find I can't we'll really remember. We'll get a photo with him. This guy really pissed me off. So like he, he was came Was he local? In. No, no, he was a rugby guy. I don't know who, I forgot his name now. I forgot his name. Um, like a white guy. Like I can't remember his name, but it was a business guy. Yeah, he because was Cardiff and Cardiff City and Cardiff Blues were together at that time. No, he, went, he, went, he wasn't like that. He was just a guy, but he wasn't, he, he'd never worked in football before, I believe. 
But okay. he, anyway, he called me in. And that now, you know, I've played for England in November. Now we're in December. And Dave Jones at this point is like saying to me, you know, what's going on with your contract? We want you to sign a contract. And I was like, Gaffer, I told you we'd be in this position. Right now, all I'm concentrating on is promotion. All I'm concentrating on is a season. We're talking at the end of the season. Yeah. And he's like, oh, but this, but that. And I said, listen, Gaffer, I said this to you in the last season. You didn't want to give me a new contract then. Now we're in a position where I've played for England. Now I've got ambition, right? So I'm thinking to myself, I'd love to get promotion with Cardiff. I love Cardiff. But ultimately I want to play in the Premier League and I want to play for England because now I've got a taste of England, right? So now, obviously, you, you gravitate. You, I've played with Gerard now. I've seen Gerard play. I've seen Rio play. Ashley Young. You know all these Milner, all these like top players. I've seen them play now. I want to be a part of it. I want to play with those kind of players. So I remember um, it got to like um, like Christmas time, like maybe beginning of January, and this guy. You, you have to pluck out his name. I'm sorry. Sorry to the people. I just really forgot his name. I put it back in my mind. because what was, his, what was his role? He was like the director of football. He was the one talking about contracts to me. The director of the card. Yeah. yeah. He was like the director of football or whatever it was. Okay. Um, he was the in-between, the chairman and the manager. And um, he goes to me, um, are you going to sign a new deal? And I said, listen, I want to concentrate on my football. We'll talk at the end of the season. And then he just went to me, well, if you don't want to sign a contract now, we're going to sell you. And I said, what? And he said, we're going to try and sell you in this window. And I was like, Gaffer, I'll speak to you later. And I just walked out of the room. Is that what happened, yeah? So I walked out of the room. Dave Jones come to me afterwards and was like, listen, you shouldn't have handled it that way. And I said, why, why is he fucking talking to me like this for? Like, all I want to do is concentrate and get the club, try and get promotion with, with Cardiff. And he's like, Steve yeah. Steve Burley? Not, no. no. He's, not, he's not a football guy. And, and then, um, so I let that, I let that go, but in my mind, I'm seething. So I, I called my agent and I said, this guy's just said this to me. Um, what, you know, he's like, Jay, don't worry about it. About a week later, two weeks later, another agent called me. I don't know how he got my number, but, um, Alan Pardew comes on the phone and it's like, listen, I'll, I'll give you a two year deal on such and such money a week. Do you want to, do you want to, do you, um, we're prepared to make a bid for you. And I was like, nah, I'm staying at Cardiff. I want to try and get promotion with Cardiff. So straight away, I'm still being loyal to Cardiff because I'm thinking, you know, this is my club. They gave me a lot. Dave Jones gave me a lot. They helped me turn my career around. I want to try and give something back. If I, if I can help get Cardiff promoted, that's just like legendary status. So that's, that was my aim from the beginning. Um, and then a few weeks after that, Everton inquired about me to my agent now. So this is actually to my agent. It was like, um, would JB come interested in coming to, to, um, to Everton? And again, I was like, listen, I want to try and get Cardiff promoted. And at the time, I've been honest with you, my agent at the time was like saying, listen, you know, it's, it's an opportunity here. We can, you know, we can make it happen. We can make the deal. And I was like, I want to try and get, promoted with Cardiff meanwhile this guy is um, still trying to sell me he's like saying um, you know we're trying to get I think it was like 7 million for me something like that at the time and in my mind I'm thinking who's going to pay 7 million for me I got 6 months for my contract left like people if people it, 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 he's trying to get blood out of a stone yeah, he's he? trying to get blood out of a stone and I'm thinking to myself all I want to do is concentrate on my football so we done that. Now I'm not even speaking to him no more. When I see him around the training ground, when I see him at the stadium, I don't even acknowledge him. I'm just blanking him now because he just disrespected me. Yeah. So now I'm like, fuck this guy. Um, and then obviously we didn't end up getting promotion. Um, it was, you know, a poor season from us. For all the players we had, it was a poor season. Um, and, and, and then... In my mind, I didn't want to leave, but I had ambitions to play in the Premier League, play yeah, for yeah. England. I wanted to earn Premier League money as well. I get it. Because I want to look after my family. Do you know what I mean? I want to I want to be financially secure, right? So in my mind, I was just thinking, 
I, I want to do those three things. And I remember Tan um, was sending his son down to London to take me out for dinners and whatnot to Nobu and places like this. And, you know, saying, oh, you know, we can offer you, you know, the same contract you'd be getting at Premier League clubs. We can, we will give to you. And I was like saying, listen, at this point, it's not just about money. Like I need to I have ambition, right? If it was just about money, of course, you know, but I want to see where I can go to and how I can, you know, progress. And at the time that like, people say, oh, you, you know, you're one cat wonder. But people don't actually know that Stuart Pierce was coming to watch me. I missed a few squads because of injury. So I missed, I think it was a February squad because um, I had an injury and a March squad because I had an injury. So like I could have probably got like three, four caps. But because of my injuries, yeah. I was just really unfortunate. And I remember actually some some fans and stuff, there was a few fans that started saying, oh, now he's got his England cap, he don't give a shit about us and blah, blah, blah. But it's not like that. When you're out for like a month, it's hard to like yeah. find that form again that I was like scoring weekly. Um, but it wasn't like I, I was... I was getting too big for my boots. It was more just like, it became hard for me to get back to the level I was playing at. And I was still scoring goals, but it just wasn't as much as the lead up to my call up. Um, yeah, so anyway, I ended up leaving and your question, in, in our, financially, yeah, it was a very good decision. But football wise, no. Because I think as a football player, it's very difficult for a forward to go to a team in the Premier League that's down at the bottom because where I was getting like two, three chances a game at Cardiff from being, you know, one of the better teams. Now I'm not even getting one chance a game because we're always sitting deep. We're playing counter attack football. Um, so it's really difficult. I always say that I think it's, it's easier for a midfielder and a defender to make their name in the premier league purely because they have to make tackles, clearances, yeah. you know, headers, so they can they can <laughs> they can make a name for themselves just based upon that. How do we make our name for ourselves by scoring goals, right? And it's really difficult to do yeah. that as a forward. So for me, going to QPR, and I'm not saying, you know, I don't blame it solely on that. Um, you know, we did have a lot of managers. There was a lot of players coming and going. It wasn't. Uh, Remember when you were uh, banged out, Jamie Jamie Mackey? <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> With Jay Bothroyd, we have to go. <laughs> I love Jamie. Jamie's funny. What um, happened? We was playing. We was playing two touch, one touch like in a in a small area, and um, I remember I was getting closed down. I had one touch. I knew he had two touches, so I had to fizz the ball into him, and he miscontrolled it. He didn't like it. This is the way I see it as well. So I'd love to hear the way he sees it. But um, he, it was one of those ones where he got angry with me because of it and I didn't understand why because I'm thinking you've got two touches you should be able to deal with a pass like that and then he starts walking up to me and I'm like Jamie just leave it and I remember Harry Redknapp standing behind me so I was thinking I don't, I don't want to be in this position and then you know I, I, he's getting closer and his eyes have gone and I'm thinking this guy's gonna hit me man so I just beat him to the punch and then I hit him and then you know obviously it was you know, all the up? players got around. I think he had a little bit of a he had a bit of a stumble. <laughs> to me, my hand, I remember my hand was swollen. I remember that. So he's got a tough head. But and then after, <laughs> and then do you know what? It wasn't even like literally, it wasn't even the next day. Literally, we went into the next session and we shook hands and we was like yeah. at it again, training. So I mean, and it's funny because uh, Jamie, <laughs> when I went into Sky one day, Jamie Mackey shouted down the corridor, like, remember when you, <laughs> remember you, you put one on me in front of everyone? And I was like, no, Jamie, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, but Jamie's a, he's a great lad. Um, but it was just unfortunate. We had some really good players at QPR yeah. at the time, but it was so unstable. We had like three or four managers. It was just, it was just tough to really go and yeah. perform there. So. Again, it's, it's, it's two sides to the coin. I yeah. think football-wise, I wish I had stayed at um, Cardiff and I, I wish I had have gone again, like Malky Mackay, like gone again and tried to get promotion. On the other side of the coin, it was great financially for me. Of course. Um, so I can't say one or the other. 
Listen, we could we could go on for hours and talk. I really enjoyed this. No, you know, it's like there's so much. Yeah, there's so much we could talk about. Um, I'm just gonna fire just some quick ones at you. Right, go on then. Uh, wrap it up. So, one thing you've taken from 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 living in Japan into your personal life. Um, I mean the food. I don't even eat sushi here no more. Too tough because the fish, sushi is shocking compared to Japan. Um, I think from Japan it really calmed me down even more. Like I got to, you know, take a step back and a lot of it's about respect, right? And th there's no fight in there at all. Like, so, you know, the whole time I was in Japan, which was like five and a half years, six years, I never see a fight. I see arguments, wow. but not a fight. Nothing that got too bad. Um, and it was just, I, I think more than anything, just the respect part. And... I think that part, everyone's got an opinion and you just have to respect it all the time. Yeah. So that really helped me again, calm me down. Cause I've, you know, I've got a fire in my belly, you know, especially be back in London now, you know, over there, it's like, everyone's respectful people, you know, they don't look for confrontation, you know, Yeah. over here it's different. Yeah, it is, right? it's different. <laughs> and you know, even like, I've, I mean, I'm starting to get, well, I'm back in London now, so I'm more me again, but Going there was was a great experience for me and my family. Um, any major moves that came close that no one knows about? Yeah, I nearly went to Inter Milan when I was in Perugia. Um, and I was fuming about that as well. So I, I started off really well for Perugia, scored a few goals. We won it into Toto, which I believe is like what, FA Cup, what, what West Ham won now, the Europa anyway, Conference yeah, okay. League. I think it's something similar to that. Um, so we won that and then we was playing in Europe and I was playing really well. Um, and at the time, like I'm playing against the best defenders in the world. So I remember the manager said to me, if you can score like 10 goals in Serie A, it's like scoring 20 league goals somewhere else. So like, I think I, I think I ended up scoring five or six or something like that. Had it, I got to Christmas and um, at the time, Adriano was at Parma, I think. Or oh, he wasn't there. One of the two. I can't remember. But I remember they they said we want to sign we want to sign um, Jay, um, and my agent told me, and I'm in my mind I'm thinking this is it. Man. I'm going into Milan like this. You know, it's it's a dream. Like my idol, like R nine, had just left there. Um, like they they had some proper players there, and in my mind I was thinking, right. I mean, Christian Vieri was still there, so I was thinking. This is it, man. I'm going to I'm going to play in San Siro every week. I'm going to live in Milan, and then my club started mucking around, saying, "Oh, we want like 12 million euros for him." When they signed me on a free transfer, this is from Coventry as well. You signed me on a free <laughs> you signed me on a free transfer. Now you yeah, want 12 million euros from me after four months or five months? Yeah, you would have went um, for free, mate. I wanted to, I was saying I said, "Shall I shall I just punch the manager in the face and get sacked without doing anything?" But um, nah, I I. Best striking partner? Uh, Bellas. Bellas. I love Bellas. Playing with him was unbelievable. Like, again, on and off the field. But I had a real relationship. Everyone, the be um, I say best player, definitely Bellas. But the best partnership, I would, you know, Chops. Like, we had a great partnership. But the best striking partner was uh, was Bellas. Who's winning the Premiership? I still think Man City will win, but I think it will be out of Man City and Liverpool. I mean, I'm an Arsenal fan, um, and I hope Arsenal can push it. But I just think the fact that Arsenal are in the Champions League this year means it will be difficult. I think Liverpool have been in this situation before; they're more equipped with it. Man City just seem to win games when they need to. Like, I don't even care. I, honestly, I don't even look at the table. Unless I'm on Sky Sports, I don't really look at the table until it gets to, like, January, February. When it gets to January, February is when it really matters. And it's a team that can put results in. And you, we've seen it. Like, Man City go and win, like, 15 games in a row. Like, no one else does that. Yeah. So that's, that's why I feel like, you know what? They've lost a few games. They're not playing particularly well now. But I still think that they'll probably win it. Um, future plans. Um, I'm doing like I said. I'm doing my pod show. I want to grow that. I got some charities that I'm working with. Some initiatives that I want to do. 
Um, but I just want to progress on television, you know, become as successful as I can on, on Sky Sports. Um, Manager you in off the, no, off the no, I've, I haven't got the pa- I haven't got the patience, patience. to be a, a Man United. But unless one of my mates say, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm getting an Arsenal job. I'll definitely come and be a manager then or an assistant coach or whatever. And, it, and, and, it, and if a club came in for the year contract, you wouldn't go back? No, no. I feel like I've achieved everything I want to achieve. Now I'm spending a lot of time, you know, the, you know, now like taking my son to school and picking him up is, a, yeah. the, you know, that's, that's the, the best moments of my life right now. I really enjoy it. I've, ne- I've never been able to do that before because of my football career. I've always been traveling. I've always been moving. I've always had training. So I've never been able to take my son yeah. to school and and pick him up it's like it's a joy that you know yeah parents yeah. can only understand one thing we do with all our guests um and i think a, a good angle with you would be um the product of your environment maybe but we ask everyone down the camera just to give a positive message to the people maybe anyone watching it might be someone who's uh trying to get into sports or trying to get into something who's probably stuck or leave them with anything just a a, a lesson that you've learned in your career I think the most important thing in life is it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down it's important that you get back up again and keep trying because the more you keep trying the more successful you can be if you get down if you get knocked down and you give up you've got no chance to get back up and be successful so my advice and what I always did throughout my career I had so many knockbacks uh, and I could speak them about, about them all day long. But because of those knockbacks, I was able to be successful and have a great career. It's beautiful. Yo, Jay, Thanks, I want to say a big thank you for making this great happen. to be here finally. Yeah. Do you enjoy I'll it? Say, yeah, man. I'll, wait, I'll come to... I'll come to I'll come to see Leon Jean yeah. with you. Yeah, man. Oh, oh, I, listen, I want to come to Cardiff. I just haven't had the yeah. opportunities, but I will let we'll you know. When con- I know yeah. I'm coming to Cardiff. Shout me, man. 100%. I definitely will. Yeah. I definitely will. No, we will. I'll make I'll make it happen. I'll give you a message. and yeah. it, Whenever you're down next, just it give probably, me a shout. Do you know anyway. what the thing is? Because of my golf now, we go around and we play um, different courses. There's a few mm. courses in... Cardiff, Cardiff Manor, that I want to do. Cottrell uh, Park, Port Core, Port Core, Port, uh, yeah. Port Talbot, it's got, uh, near Port Talbot, like North Canelli. There's one. Yeah. I don't know the name of it. So like, I'm gonna do, we're gonna do one there. We're gonna so do one there for sure. All right. So I will, I will definitely be down there, but it will probably be in. Well, it will be in the summer because yeah. I know it rains so much in Cardiff. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it it was good. Not so. too much, yeah, really. Here Gio, we go, I, I, mate. Listen, like, do you know what the thing is? When you put this out. If anyone have any questions or anyone want to ask you something, you know, come back to me. Yeah, yeah, hundred. It's fine, it's fine. What a guy like, isn't it? <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I really enjoyed this. This was better than I expected, to be fair. I thought this was going to be something that we, we've longed it out for so long and we're going to go, well, what was the fucking point of that? Do you mate, know what? It's, two, it's half two, mate. I mean, <laughs> mate, 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 the kid's fucking outside of school. Like that. <laughs> Memories, uh, picking up my son from school, late. <laughs> Nah, no, um, thank you very much, brother. That's a pleasure. Leave a comment, let us know what you think, and until next time, stay central. Yo, I was, I'm buzzing. That was good. Buzzing. Central really Club. That.